Hello, and welcome to Jason Cabinets Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cabinets. Our guest today is, is Kanako Matsumoto. 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 <laughs> Kanako, you ready to be great today? Thank you. Thank you for um, inviting me here. It's great. Yes. Exciting. Kanako is a first-generation immigrant from Japan who moved to the U.S. to escape from sexism to build a better life. She's a mother of a 16-year-old son who has special needs. She also has a deep understanding of challenges of startups and small businesses. She has 20 years of public accounting and consulting experience helping small businesses. And she is a master at creating solutions for challenging issues, seeking opportunities in adverse circumstances. Thanks for being here again, Kanako. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Thanks so, for having me here. So first thing, what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? Well, before the COVID, I used to do a lot of karaoke. And uh, because I grew up in Japan and that was the thing, you know, my parents did it and it was a generational thing that you can actually have fun, just go out and then sing and anywhere, basically. And that's kind of in, in, in the weekends and stuff. When I have time, I have a little Wii machine that, that let you kind of download all kinds of songs. So that's what I did. And then I also, I also love to uh, actively, I don't know, exercise. To run, but I used to be a really a hardcore valuable player. So okay, I used to find a, um, like a teams that I can join and then play volleyball. Do you, do you karaoke just at your house in front yeah, of the family? Yeah, that's yeah, or that's do, what or, I. Or do you go out publicly? Like... I, I don't I don't go out to these uh, public places no. and then you know, but it, it, it just because it's just a lot of different people there and some people don't really interested in listening to <laughs> singing and I'm not saying that I'm I'm a really good singer but it's just it's one of those things that you can feel like you know just gonna take off your mind for something else and for a little while so yes and yeah and, and you play volleyball in school I used to well yeah I, okay. in the junior high and high school that's what I did and I uh once in a while if I find a good team I go to a community centers and kind of join a team and then play what, i haven't done that for what position do you play well i'm a small so uh i usually do uh just a kind of like a defending i know receiver what's it called like libra or something libra, like that? libra yeah. yeah yeah the only reason i know because my daughter played that in high school ah, yeah. good good yeah. yeah so basically that's kind of or i do play setter okay um yeah and how, when was the last time you played volleyball oh my god that was before the covid okay yeah right so, so now it's like three years ago ago and then now i'm just kind of like oh yeah I, I want to but i'm just kind of getting really tired of uh looking for just spending time looking for a team that i want to join yeah. so maybe sometime and when someday. was the last time you did karaoke out in public oh that's another th in public yeah <laughs> like at some random karaoke club or oh whatever. yeah that would be like a long time ago i yeah. guess almost like 10 years yeah. ago you know these days because you have a, like a karaoke box mm -hmm. and then you have a thing so you can do it at home so yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's that's good. So, you you came here from Japan. Yes. Um, how old were you when you came over here? I was twenty one, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you came over because of sexism, Japan. Yeah, Can you basically, talk about that? I grew up in a very conservative city in one of the I would say one of the very I mean conservative cities in Japan, and uh, that, that that I I uh, I was born in uh, raised in a city called Kyoto which had about 1200 years of history. Um, and it just did, you know, my parents and all the uh, grandparents it just had a, some mindset. The girls was be a girls, meaning conservative, get married when you're after high school. And then you just don't even think about the getting a job or, you know, getting, um, going to school, higher education is like, it's like, what, why do I have to spend money for that? So, and then not that I, knew I wanted to be something but it, you know what do you do when you're 18 you told you're told that well I, I mean you just do what you what what we tell you and then you're a teenager you're rebellious <laughs> you don't follow whatever your parents tell you so I just like I don't like this I don't want people to tell me what to do with my life and in fact it doesn't have to be you know, this country, United States, I could, I could have gone somewhere else in Japan, as long as I didn't have to follow whatever the, somebody told me to do. So it just happened. This is an accident. I just accidentally landed in this country. So you came here by yourself? Yes, I did. 
So well, I guess first of all, why, why the United States? Why not, you know? I, well, see, that's the thing. It just happened to me. I was going to college and I was really miserable in my hometown. And I was telling my one of my professors, like, you know what? I, I don't know. I just, maybe I don't want to live. I, I don't like this, my life. Like, it just, everybody around me tells me what to do. So then my professor said, well, I know some, maybe you might want to try you know, outside of the country and see what it's like. And then you might learn something about. So she introduced to me um, someone in LA that who can actually pick me up from an airport. And when I arrived, and then that was probably the only time I saw her. And this person, you had no idea who she was. It wasn't a relative, just some random stranger to have you just off. somebody that um, uh, one of my professors, professors knew, maybe her, one of her maybe the students or something in the past. And, and then she was kind enough to come to the airport in LA and pick me up and took me to the y YWCA. And uh, I believe that was maybe the last time or maybe the, yeah, only I remember seeing her once or twice, that's it. And after that, it was, I was on my own. And so how to put the question. So a lot of people in the States, you know, they'll say the United States is messed up, you know, Sexism here is bad. It's all about here. Can you kind of kind of compare best compare best kind of like Japanese sexism versus, versus American sexism? Yeah, and I think the um, fundamental issue is the same, but the United States has made a lot of progress. And well, I should say there's a lot of publicity, and then people have awareness has gone. You know, when <clears throat> happened last, I would say thirty years or, or so, but in Japan, it's still just a fundamentally. You know, um, things has improved somewhat, but that's only in a metropolitan city. To be killed. I mean, I guess with Tokyo, it might be a different story. But uh, it, it just it, it's really routine, right? A woman is supposed to stay home and then raise a child. And if you are, you know, married and then your husband works and then your husband work is more prioritized than yours and then especially when you have a kids like you know in Japan it's just a notion that the women are more suitable to raise a kids a children and then it just that people can't really get away from that so I, I think that it's just that there's a lot of a uh, um, oppression of being a woman and then more and then also the women are more sexualized that as well so um and I don't know, it's just age issues as well. The younger women are, I mean, here too, but younger yeah. women are more, you know, I don't know how, it just really uh, paid attention mm -hmm. for any levels. Yeah. And uh, but here though, I mean, I think I had to go through the same path, but I, there was a big improvement that has been made, even though there are the fundamental issues still there, but uh, people have woken up and then say, hey, well, just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you have to do this, or just because you're a man doesn't mean that you have to do this. But it, I think it's just that Japan is still a lot of, I mean, people feel that there's a roles, divisions, that it, by nature, somehow, you know, well, I mean, of course, there's a biology different, but, you know, like occupations and you know, who decide that engineers are, you know, better for men. I mean, who, who said that? I mean, how? Yeah, but it's in Japan. I think it is the people think that oh, God, boys are more, you know, better with the math skills, and women's are more better for communications or more, you know, like liberal arts type of work. Now, of course, you know, females get sexualized all across the world, right? But isn't I could be wrong? Isn't it really better in Japan? Like, don't they have like don't, I heard where like they're like men will buy like all these sex dolls, like fake sex toy <laughs> dolls, like. <laughs> and they have like the geisha girls, you know, it's like, you know, like, of course it's better, but it's like, it's kind of like it's really bad in, in over there. I don't know. What, what, I guess, what do you mean? It's, I think it is complex. I think it's in terms of the sexism or even think about sex. I think in this country, there are a lot of, I don't, I don't know if I get trouble in doing this, saying this, but there's a lot of religious um, background that comes with it. And in Japan, and in terms of that, I think they are much more open. And so just because, you know, yeah, like you're talking about the guys are, I don't know, playing with sex dolls and whatnot, people are like, okay, right? And there's a lot of more, um, I think there's a lot more um, 
accepted taxi industry over there. So, um, yeah, the United States were definitely like a conservative view. Like when I, when I first started on, during the army way back in the day, mm-hmm. which I was in Germany, right? Mm-hmm. And in Europe is like topless beaches, people naked, whatever. Like, right? I'm like, am I in the wrong place? Like, what's going on here? Right? I had no clue, no idea. Right? Because you could never do it down in your states, right? Right. You right. Like they would yeah. call the police on you and all mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's just a, I don't know. This a is that a philosophy or how you think about it? It's a cultural thing. There's a huge cultural. Yeah. Tick. I mean, it comes down to the sex industry or sex. I think there's a huge differences. I, I this is my own personal perception, but it's is is it is something to do with a religious yeah um, philosophy here in this mm-hmm. country. But in Japan, 99 percent. I, I don't know. Maybe I haven't really done any data, but majority of the people are not super religious there yeah. are people who are but a majority of people are actually they're more taken as a custom rather than religion yeah so in terms of that they're much more open-minded i think so when you came to the united states did yes. you know how to speak english i i studied english in in in, in a college in, in japan but that's a completely different story when you're learning like reading and then you know uh uh, uh listening um, when you come to the actual country the where people speak English as a native tongue, completely different because people speak really fast or people have an accent or people just, you know, it, it, so it, it was very challenging. Or one word can mean 10 different things depending on when you say it. Yeah, and, 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 and even they, in certain ways, even though they... They know that I'm a foreigner and then probably it just arrived here or whatnot because they can actually tell from how I speak, but they don't slow down. You know, some yeah. people just like a no, 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 no. And like, I'm like, excuse me, can you say it again? I don't understand it. So there was a lot of, uh, um, yeah, repeating and keep asking, excuse me, you have to tell me again. I don't understand. So what are some cultural challenges you had when you first came over? Like some things that, you know, like you saw stuff on America on the TV, but you came in like, oh shit, there's nothing like this. Uh, and I'll think about it. You know, it's been here for a little while, so it's like sometimes I really had to think about that. But it is a lot about oh, the first thing that I, it's kind of interesting, but uh, people may not really pay attention too much. And it's like what? Oh, but that in Japan, um, we don't at that time we didn't have a lot of a uh, on like home parties or people don't come to your house for our parties to begin with. That if they want to go out or hang out, they go hang out bars or restaurants or because there's so many places you can go to in Japan um, in your neighborhood but here you know I noticed that there's a lot of people have a parties and whatnot and then well, the first time I was surprised I was people just go into the kitchen and open up their, their fridge without asking <laughs> the homeowner and that was like a shocking to me like a, oh my gosh people are coming into the people's houses and then just open up the fridge and then take stuff or put stuff and it's like a is that okay? Is that allowed? <laughs> yeah, with that you have to assume that they already know each other, right? Like, yeah, yeah, like, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it just even even in Japan, yeah, if you, you know each that. other, you, you just don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here in the states, like if I go to a friend's house, I like really good friends. Yeah, I'll just go to the refrigerator. Hey, I'm gonna get a beer. I'm gonna do this, you know. Right, or like, right. And plus, it depends too. You know, like I'm at a friend's house. And I know his wife doesn't like that stuff. I'll, I'll ask, you know, was this mean the guy? I'll, you know, yeah, whatever. Right, exactly. But it, but here it, it, in Japan, you don't even. Think ask that it, you don't yeah. think about doing it you, until you just like you know you just stay in it because you're a guest you're a guest yeah. and they'll serve you kind of thing so that was a little bit of you know shocking yeah. to see like, i've been at some people's house like i went to the first time you know didn't do anything like that second time <laughs> i say can uh do you have a beer they'll be like you know you're not handing can't get your beer yourself right. right i'm not your servant you know yeah so, exactly yeah that's but, so funny yeah it's just little things yeah. that is kind of like whoa yeah yeah um so how long did you live in la I didn't really stay there much no. because, well, first of all, um, if you don't have a car in LA, oh yeah, yeah, you're done. I, you're I, done. Was, I was, you're done, right? Yeah. And I didn't know that, of course, because I'm only, you know, I just got out of a Japan, and Japan it has a, it just really, really good public transportation mm-hmm. system there, so you don't have to have a car no. to, you know, get around. But he, in LA, I, I realized like, oh, okay, you don't have a car. It takes two hours to get yeah. anywhere. Of course, and I that's think, on a good day. It, 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 right, exactly. And then you know, it, it's just if you had to wait at the bus stations and all kinds of things happen, and I just kind of got tired of it. 
And also another thing that I shot was how much trash was on the street in LA. In Japan, you just don't have a trash on the street. You just don't. So th that was a kind of little shock to me that I, because in my mind, America is like a world is really modern, you know, metropolitan cities in LA and all that. And then, yeah, it, it just felt like, where are all these trash coming from? How, well, how come people just don't, you know, take, take the trash yeah, home and then throw it's away? A problem, yeah. yeah. Like I was in the army for 25 years. I've been like Germany, Italy, mm -hmm. Korea, different right. places. Like all the places, like, like, People don't realize I, I've never been to Japan really, just like the airport. But in Korea, the first time I got there, was like they had these big screen TV on the top of the buildings. It was like codes to get into your building, like, and the internet's so freaking fast over there, right? Just in right. Asia in general, so fast. And I come over, like, it's almost like it's still AR, I'll die up, die up over, mm -hmm. right? And like in, in Korea and Germany, the roads get done like immediately. Here, right. like, like in Tacoma, they did a, it was funny, they did a picture of this construction site on the highway, two different pictures. They said, hey, guess what dates? They were, they were like five years apart, the same exact picture, right? Yeah. Like, what have you done in five years? <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes looking at it, it's like a, like a third world country because like, you know, the bridges are breaking down, you know. Like, oh, the, all the potholes. Potholes, yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. And I think it takes like, you know, I'm making this up. I think it takes like 24 hours to get from a train from Seattle down to San Diego. Overseas, like anywhere overseas, Europe, Asia, that'd be like a four hour trip. Like so fast. I know. So this is this car culture I, I just don't get it yeah right? it's like uh, you're so used to getting the trans you know public transportation it's just you it's just really bundled yeah and then like seattle public transportation is pretty good right it's better than most places you know right right correct. but like 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 i know like over in europe germany italy like seoul korea like I, my family was with me for three years by three kids this we're gonna subway go all, you know, over the sound right yeah so it, we're, it, we're in this neighborhood in this neighborhood like and it was you would see like four-year-old kids on the subway yeah exactly. perfectly safe yeah as long as you follow the color yeah that's yeah. what you had to do absolutely that's true it's just very similar in japan as well so you're so used to it. like oh your kids i mean the elementary kids are like riding their own buses yeah. or train and themselves and then you don't have to worry about it yeah i know in germany like suppose you miss a train oh well the next one being like 10 minutes you know yes correct yeah, it's like it, it, it is yeah and i i, I can say that yeah, those are smaller countries yeah. in terms of the you know the land and everything but still yeah once you get used to that you feel like oh, wow this is actually this country is kind of yeah inconvenience in terms of tra yeah. Yeah, transportation right? i know so how often you go back to japan to visit well i'll uh i'll I'll try to at least once a year because I have an elderly mother who's still living there. And then I have a family. The rest of the family members are. Do you there. have any family over here? Or just you? Well, just the, me and uh, my husband and okay. my child. Okay. And uh, yeah, the rest of the, I guess, the blood related families are all still in Japan. Have they ever come to visit you? Mm -hmm. They okay. have. They have. But, you know, because of the COVID, yeah. I couldn't see my mom for over three years. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. Do you have any like any nieces or nephews that were like, hey, can I come fly to the United States? Let me come live with you. You know, it's that's another thing. I think it, you kind of brought it up that that's a good question, kind of like a segue to another question. But in Japan, I don't know why the younger people are less and less, I don't know, less feel like I mean, they don't want to challenge, you know, the new things. And I don't know why, because it, it just is all strange because there's a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. here. And then there's a lot of uh, channels that they can actually come here and study or, you know, do things. And then, and then but I don't know, it's just because for so long in Japan, you know, society is so peaceful and then, you know, they got everything they needed. So it, it just made a less hungrier, Yeah. you know, and that, I don't know, that might be creates mm -hmm. issues for people to kind of, advancing or yeah. branching out something new and the younger people just like oh i i almost like right now it's like i got everything i need and yeah. why do i want to go to another country yeah that's a good point so um i don't know how many want to know about boxing there's a boxing guy named evander holofield like he like he's a boxing champion you know came from bad background mm -hmm. he became a champ like make a lot of money right and he said something that sticks to me he's like it's it's hard to get motivated when you're silk when, when, you, when you're sleeping in the silk sheets yeah no worries. Yeah, he was like, it's hard to get up and get motivated and, and put, put in the work when you're sleeping in silk sheets, right? Like, so yeah, why why make the progress? Why, you know, if you have everything you need right there, like. 
Yeah, and, and then you kind of have to remember those is also what United States depict outside of the country. I mean, now we have all this internet and everything. They can they learn a lot, but it is scary in certain ways. They they, they talk about crimes yeah. and violence and guns and yeah. in Japan, right? I mean, yeah, there's none of that. Like a, none of that. So the people think of us like, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> yeah. I know for me when I was in South Korea for those three years. I, I would feel safer than the worst neighborhood so than I would some of the neighborhoods in the United States, right? Like, yeah, it, it, it's just a, a, it's different, right? Here, I mean, it, it, I wouldn't say it is that we're in danger all the time, mm -hmm. but you just you definitely gotta be aware of your surroundings. You have to be aware, and then there are things happen. Yeah. So, but in Japan, it's like you know, a woman can a nineteen year old woman can walk on the street middle of the three o'clock in the morning yeah. and nothing happens. Yeah. Right. So you probably don't know the answer to this, but I just thought about something like, you always hear about the like, Chinese exchange students coming here from China, mm -hmm. getting the college degrees. But it's like like people from Japan or Korea really do that much. Do you think any reason that is or? Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, you've been in Korea. I, I, th I think part of it is like you said, you know, the Japan and Korea, they have their economies going pretty strongly. You know, they're, you know, life's pretty good for them, you know. For right. China, they're still like, even though like the modern country is still like, you know, like, kind of a rural country, you know? Right. And then China probably is very, com I, I, from my point of view, China is, seems to be very competitive. There's a lot of competitive culture. Yeah. And then people always kind of wanting to more and they wanted to advance more. Maybe, I don't know, that's how yeah. I mean, many years of 4,000, 5,000 years of history, mm -hmm. they really always have to be kind of trying to get ahead of everybody else and whatnot. That might be the social, I don't yeah. know, culture. But yeah, I think Korea and Japan, it, it is, uh, it, it's pretty peaceful, yeah. right? I mean, especially in Japan and, uh, you know, yeah. after World War II, they never really had any conflict mm -hmm. with another, I mean, yeah. there are threat mm -hmm. there because of the North Koreas yeah. and all that. But as a, you know, country as a whole, mm -hmm. they really ha haven't had yeah. any wars or anything no, like that. Yeah, so most of the people who live right now, they just only see, know the peaceful times. Yeah. And the nice paychecks, you know, the right. nice weekends, you yeah. know. And, and things are changing because it is in Japan and, you know, for 20 years or so, or maybe even 30 years, they haven't had uh, inflation. Mm -hmm. So they, they now have a really uh, serious question yeah. about, you know, wages are not going up and it's kind of opposite from here. Um, so, but, but then until now, I can say that people felt like, okay, what well, I mean, I got everything I need and I'm yeah. peaceful and it's, it's safe. And what else can I ask for? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I think about that. That's a mm -hmm. very good point. Um, so is this your permanent home now? Yes. Okay. Right. And then, you know, I have a child and then earlier you mentioned that I have a child that who's 16 and has a special needs and, you know, it, it's just the one you, I mean, you know that you're a parent and then, but especially when your child is have some challenges, you kind of have to commit as your parent and then kind of, kind of let out the, yeah. uh, kind of think about that, you know, life. And, and you, and just have, what, you just have the one child? Yeah. I just have a one child. Okay. And then, um, yeah. So I, I think that it, this is a place that I will not. Okay. Kinda, and was your child special needs since he was born or he came on later on? Or Oh, he had the ADHD, but okay. also he, on on top of that, he also has some sort of a, um, developmental delays that we can't really kind of mm -hmm. put hands on. Um, he was always, from a day one, we knew that he, he was, I mean, growth-wise, he wasn't really following the milestones. So we kind of knew that something something going on, but... He he is catching up slowly, meaning like he always like five years behind or you know, okay. I mean, right now. I mean, I mean, when you're three, he's behind about one year or okay. I mean that gap is getting bigger and bigger. So but I, I think I think all those uh, parents who have a special needs, at some point we accept that and we kind of have to like think about okay, what would be the good life for him that we can actually kind of help him to achieve. So you operate the eleven year old level right now? Mm -hmm. What level does he operate now as far as age? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think it is about 11. Yeah. Okay. You know, he's 16 and he's going to high school, but he's in uh, something called um, ILC. That's okay. an individual learning center. So that's the where, um, I think it's, a, 
how many kids in one class, but it, you know, the similar, um, the students that are uh, in the class that are uh, taught by a special needs um, teachers. Yeah. So are you and husband going to have to like take care of him for us as life? To some extent. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm still kind of, you know, it will probably takes longer for him to become like adults, adults that independently. But uh, um, we can see that for, for, for my son's case, I think we can, he, it will just take as much as more time than anybody else. But slowly, I think he can become independent. So the, the other case, you know, it's like 18, just you can throw them out and then say, yeah. hey, you're on your own. Yeah. But uh, for my son, probably it's not the case. It might take another seven, eight years to kind of understand what means to be independent. So my husband and I is kind of, kind of, kind of like a lay out. Okay. We just have to live longer. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and then work until what, 80 yeah. years old to so yeah. that we can actually provide for him. Yeah. Or, I mean, you know, just never know, but. So is this gen something genetic or? No, um, I don't think, I mean, well, I think ADHD, then most of the time, I think it's a genetic. Um, but then for the other things that we never know, because we haven't really done, I mean, there, there got to be some sort of a test that you can do, but I, you know, I'm sure it costs a lot of money to yeah. do that. And how, how old was he when you all, when someone told you all, you know? Uh, so from day one, he couldn't nurse. So I knew okay. that, so, that he was born, right? Next yeah, that's day. The, that's the beginning. That's the beginning wrong. Yeah, yeah it's, that's it's the beginning. Yeah, that's the beginning. wrong. Exact yeah. indication. And then I heard that it's, um, things happened. So, you know, I wasn't really worried about that beginning. He just couldn't nurse. And then he, he was able to, we, are, we did all kinds of stuff to, to nurse him and feed him. And the first, uh, first month, he lost weight. You know, it's the opposite of, I mean, babies usually drink you know, um, breast milk and whatnot, and then gets bigger. But he, in his case, he was going the opposite way. So I was alarmed. And also the doctor was alarmed. And, it, and it, we, we tried to do all kinds of stuff, but he couldn't really nurse from uh, directly from my breast. So we just resorted to some other thing. It's just been to the bottle or tubes or whatever. Um, yeah. So, so, but then he's, I, you know, he, he grew, I mean, as far as the health goes, he's healthy, but it, as we knew that he couldn't walk on his own until like 18 months. And then he couldn't talk until probably like three years old. And then, you know, he was wearing diaper until he was four years old. So, I mean, you can see it's just like every yeah. milestone is like fail, fail, yeah. fail. but yeah. But then, I mean, you know, I, I was worried that at two years old, it's like, oh, is he going to wear a diaper for the rest of the, his life? You know, like, but then, of course, it's, I mean, he get cut out of it. So so how do you deal with this? Like at the time, I'm sure other parents are like, you know, my son's walking at 12 months. My son's talking at 16 months. Like, how do you deal with that? Like, as far as me, like, you know, as far as not criticizing yourself, like, oh, my goodness. My son's not doing this. I'm a horrible mother, right? How do you stay, well, I, stay it, positive and say, hey, this is just it, what's it, going on? It's, I think it's hard because first, I mean, of course, you feel like, oh, how did this happen? Well, did I do something when I was pregnant? Or you, you always think about that, right? Because how how not to? You think about it. How did that happen? It's like, I don't know. I mean, you can't really blame for everything. You know, there, there sometimes there is no reason. But then, so you go through that process of, at first, you're shocked, and I think just like any other, like a grieving process or something like that, then you, for the parents who are special, have a special needs kids, I think you go through this similar process of discovery, and then, then kind of shock waves come in, and then kind of almost like this, not a disappointment, I don't want to say disappointment, but it's like, okay, what to do? It's like frust frustrations and sadness, and then kind of um, hopelessness. Of course, because you think that your child would be, you know, just normally developing, you know, the milestone, hitting the milestone and all that. But then it, it's at some point you accept because that's your child. You love him so much and there's nothing you can change that. And then you kind of, after, once you accept that, you feel better. And it, I have gone, through, I have seen so many parents go through the process and then there are people that we just can't accept it. Right, especially if, especially like a um, mild case of a special needs or somewhat that a, there's a lot of a 
um, people out there who, you know, kids out there that are, who are diagnosed, diagnosed or almost diagnosed with uh, autism or ADHD. And then the kids are all kinds of different spectrum. So you can't really say that, okay, this child is like this, so it's exactly the same like that guy, or it, it's just not possible, right? But it, it's it, as a parent, especially when you're a new parent, it's very hard to so, accept that. So is it safe to presume that you haven't had any other kids so you could focus on this one? Yeah. I, I mean, I think it, I already, well, my because I was working all along, right, as a a, a to make a living, living of course, and as I, it, it, I think this is all comes with this, my background, how I came here, and then the fact that I don't have an extended family here. Um, when you have a child, it's hard to kind of balance your work in home life and in parenting, and uh, the uh, the company that in the app that I developed is based on, I mean, re- literally in my own experience where I was struggling to, I was running late to, you know, pick up a child from a daycare. I got stuck in, this was of course before the uh, COVID. And then, I mean, now it's the traffic coming back to the to the stage again, but uh, um, accidents happen and you get yeah. stuck in the, you know, traffic or in the I-90. Or, or, or someone at the job says, can you just stay one more minute? Exactly. That's exactly yeah, my my you know, and or your client that you're trying to reach for last two weeks and then calls finally at 5 30 and then you're like, uh, should I take it? Not take it, but yeah. you take it. Yeah. And then, you know, you can't just say, Oh, I'm sorry, I had to go because I had to pick up my child. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you do? You're just gonna hang it, you know, do good because you just have sometimes you feel like you have to. So then you're right now you're like, oh my gosh, my, you know, childcare closes at sick. What am I going to do? Yeah. Every minute you're late, you're like charging like some crazy amount exactly, of money. Exactly. They used to, I mean, I hear all, I mean, each child provider do differently. And, but I heard that it's last time in downtown Seattle, you know, they charge like a $50 or flat fee for even one minute you're late or something like that, or two dollars per minute and yeah. I, I hear all kinds of different yeah. but it, I, I do understand the, the other side as well because from a child care perspective I mean they want to go home too right exactly yeah, they go and home you too. gotta have to do something yeah. because you can't just oh it's okay drive carefully that's all they all say that but I can see you know it's like oh my god like, you know, they gotta like, go home yeah. cooking dinner gotta, yeah you know they might have to go to a kid's game or whatever you know exactly or... they have their schedule too so this uncertainty that you, I mean, somehow you created, it's just like a domino effect to yeah. other people. So that's the, uh, my own experience. And I thought, and then I saw other people coming in on time. I'm like, I don't know how they managed <laughs> to do that. Right. And then I thought, you know, if I could just the one click and while I was driving you know, safely and then ask them to pick up or sign out my child and yeah. wait for me there, I would be so happy and it would yeah. less stress. So then that's how I kind of came up with the idea of I gotta have an app. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're definitely gonna do a deep dive in your startup in, in, in later on. But yeah. next, I want to talk about before you got a startup, you're an accountant like 20 years, right? So just me personally, when I think of startups, I don't think of accounting, right? Like, <laughs> like accountants, like they seem like this mundane numbers. I know. I same know, thing, I know. same thing. No creativity. Yeah, yeah, right, right. No, right. it's like you know, yeah. do the same thing over and over again. No new business ideas, you know. <laughs> so I talk about the transition of going from an accounting background. So being a startup, yeah, right. like completely opposite so mindset. Here's the thing. Again, in my life, everything accidents, right? Like coming here in the United States is, is an accident because just because my one of my professors that, that she kind of said, Oh, I know somebody in the United States. And that's why I mean I didn't even know what exactly United States that what I can do, but I came here because I just wanted to escape. And then the accounting too, it was an accident, ac- accidental occupation. I never really dreamed if, if I asked about 30 years ago, right? Somebody asked me, then what would you be doing? Oh, you're going to be doing an, an accounting. Then I was like, like, no way, because I'm actually a very creative person. I have a lot of like imagination and I know imagination. So, and 20, accounting- years, so 20 years of accounting didn't kill your cre- creativity. <laughs> Almost did, but it didn't, right? And and so, but accounting is is just one of those things that you do. Like, well, okay, what do you do to make a living? You gotta have to do something because you do have to eat. So that's one of the things. That somehow I was good at it, 
I went to school, then I was one of the top students and somehow it just came easy to, although I'm not, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say I'm a really like numbers person, but I really not because I'm not like, I'm not bonding. <laughs> it's not my favorite thing to do, but it came easier for other than other things. So I said, okay, then, then I'm just going to pursue that and see what happens. And but eventually, I knew that uh, if I learn about accounting, I thought that I will learn something about the small business because you get to deal with a different type of a small businesses and you can learn something. So that was a lot of motivation, not because I like that doing taxes. And, 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 I like, is your degree in accounting? Yeah, I have a degree in accounting. What, what, what schools are from? At University of Washington. Okay. And I got a CPA license. Okay. So it, it just kind of, I took it to all the way because once I started, I might as well just finish it. You know, and, and then did I think about I'm going to be stay as a CPN and they working for a public company forever? No, because that's not, that was my, you know, motivation was. Not your dream that. goal for your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And again, it's, there are, I mean, there's incredible accountants out there that are who really, I mean, way smarter than I am. But, but I, um, to me, it, it was like a process of learning something. So. Mm -hmm. For all the small business owners and startup founders out there, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, everyone knows you. I do tech, I do accounting, right? Mm -hmm. But it's probably the one thing you'd like, you'd rather like cut your toenails off, right? Than do accounting, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's just like. I know it's a, such a tedious thing. Yes. Then it's all the compliance and everything that you're going to have to follow the rules. I totally get it. Yeah. So for the people that are looking for accountant or bookkeeper, CPA, or like what advice do you have for them for finding the one for them? What is the what? Yeah, sorry. Uh, advice to find like a, a bookkeeper for them accountant that they should be using. Like what, what should be, they be looking for when they bring on their own account, accountant or yeah. CPA or whatever? I, I would say, you know, uh, yeah, that's a good question actually. But uh, I think it's somebody who really understand the, what your challenges are because just like anything else, one doesn't fit all. And your needs are different from another person's needs, another company's needs. And then you can do it different ways. Accounting can be done different ways, right? You can do a book, hire a bookkeeper, or you might learn something. You might, you might be able to do certain bookkeeping work on your own because it depends on the size of your co company yeah. and you might not have enough budget to pay for the bookkeeper and whatnot. So I think it, I, I would say that uh, if you're looking for CPA or bookkeeper, um, try to ask them a question as much as you can and see um, if they can actually customize, you know, services that are, you need because uh, it, it's, there's all different kind of services out there and then understand the industry. And then, yeah, and another thing is it's understanding about industry, your particular thing is so huge too. Because it's each industry is so different, yeah. and then it, it um, depends on the industry how you account for is different as well. Yeah, I know. I guess you know, like recently, probably like a couple of months, I'll get it. I get a either email or link to me like once a week from somebody in India, Bangladesh. You know, mm -hmm. I want to be your bookkeeper, like yeah. guy. I'm not going to give my bookkeeper someone I don't know, right. especially some random country yeah. across the world, right? You know, like exactly. And then, then you know, even I heard that as a larger. Um, known very major um, CPA firms that they actually also some of the tax preparation yeah. out there too. Yeah. And I just something I was like, really? Do they understand it? Because there are things that are, you know, un un unless you live in the country that you may not really understand what really going on or, you know, there's a lot of stuff that is just, even businesses is like, it's like a living thing to me, right? So it's hard for the, someone to just to take it and run with it yeah. if you really don't have the experience. It's just like anything else, I think. So next, talk some about the challenges of being a working mother, working mother or working single father, just working parents in general. What's yeah. some, of, some of the challenges? The challenges, are, I think, in this, I, well, I'm kind of thinking of, in these um, developed or modern countries, and uh, um, you know how we tend to have a, our own single I mean, family is like sometimes you have a you and your husband, a you and your partner and a child. So you're like a really isolated. And in that case, you just don't have a lot of a 
help that you can get immediately. And that's the challenge that I think, as, as especially when you're working on, um, this is just my own philosophy. I grew up in an extended family. My grandparents are there when, and then my parents had a retail business. So they're busy, but grandparents helped. And that really, you know, hugely helped my parents. And then as far as the child wearing, I think, because when I come home, my parents are gone, but my grandma was there to watch me. And so, it, so I just think that it's, I'm hoping that extended family type of idea. I think here um, in the Asian cultures in this country, a lot of people are still doing that. But as they more the, I guess it's an, I don't know, it's just a typical standard American family. Mm -hmm. They don't really live with the extended families yeah. and then they don't get extra help. But uh, I understand why. I mean, there, there's some personal spaces you mm -hmm. need and privacy and all that. But I, I see a lot of, uh, I don't know, benefits for having a relatives and then just to help each other to, you know, to um, raise a child. And I, I, I mean, we're completely um, in favor of a philosophy that it, it take, really takes a village to raise a child. And then your child is not just your child. I think the child does have a future in the country and you should, you know, any child would be it should be part of your I don't know, uh, how do I say, part of your agenda, yeah. too. I know when I was growing up, myself, and even my, my kids that me and my wife raised, like, we, everybody would be outside playing, you know, you would say, hey, hey, little Tommy, you know, don't do that, you know, none of your kids. Now it seems more like, you know, like, you, you like, correct another, someone else's kid, they yell at you, like, don't talk to my kid like that, you know, that's not your kid, you know, so, like, that's definitely changed, I think, in our Yeah, states. so, so. I, I think that's kind of like a, exactly what you're saying, because if you're in the neighborhood back in those days and your neighbors actually really kind of care about, you know, just like a, they acted like your own parents and say, hey, yeah. don't do that. Don't do this. They and will then, curse your kid and kind of tell you, hey, Jason, you know, you know, I, I had to do this to your son. Right. And you, and you were like, thank you. Right. Right. And then you get on your son and yeah. like, what, what's your problem? Right. Right. But nowadays it's like. Hey, I correct your son. You're not their father. What are you doing? Like, right, you know, exactly. like my son is never wrong, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I don't know how, how that mentality switched or when that happened, mm -hmm. but it definitely happened the last yeah this generation. Th th that's the that's like the private generation change, and I I feel like a, I I feel like that needs to be brought back mm -hmm. because that's the um, as a community we need to raise a child because it's just not just one person's responsibility. Because I always say this might be a really uh, extreme example, mm -hmm. but I think that you know it's a society you get affected by one person's actions in a way we've seen that many 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 times you know some crime has occurred and then one person takes action and then what that the, the rest there's so many people are affected and, and then not just the victim but it's, there's a, a really dominant effect on that one action so i feel like we all need to have as a society take care of all the kids that are yeah, um, and, and the younger kids and younger generation. We need to take care of the younger generation. So, how was the Japanese community in Seattle? Is a pretty strong community, I suppose. I, Japanese I it, community. I would say, in in terms of the uh, population, it's much smaller than like a Chinese community or even the Korean community. But still, it, it is a, um, it's a fairly large community in this. It, it's kind of scattered around. Um, but there's a lot of small businesses that are, um, uh, yeah, that are Japanese immigrants have started. And, uh, you know, it's just like anybody else. So they have gone through the challenges for the COVID. And then, and then yeah, and then they just, um, just like in the, because we have a lot of military base in Japan. So there's a lot of women actually uh, married to the military soldiers and yeah. then and then move eventually move over here so there's a uh in tacoma right um or fort what is that uh, fort lewis fort lewis so so i i hear there's a lot of um the uh, japanese woman moved over here with the husbands and then live in this area so the, so there's quite a bit of, of the military um families as well okay yeah now in Japan, they like they were like really locked down, locked down to a code, right? Didn't, when they like, oh. I won't say extreme, 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 but like it was like, it is some crazy, almost crazy it, it, stuff, it, right? It, 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 I think it was extreme, yeah. and it still is. 
So they just really, actually, this week we call it, uh, well, they just ended maybe, uh, Japan, um, they call it a uh, golden week because they all, the holidays are back to back. So they decided that they make it into like a, almost like a week long holiday week. And I think they just loosen that rule they had in the 29th or something because there's a lot of foreign tourists are yeah. coming in and they really want the tourists coming over and then drop the you know money yeah. and but they had a one of the very strict um rules against having a COVID COVID yeah. uh, coming into the country. Yeah. Yeah I could be wrong about this. I might be making this up, but it seemed like I remember seeing stats where like the stats like countries so like like really like COVID strict, you know, extreme compared to countries like what like do whatever I think I think it was either Denway, Denmark or Norway treated just like the flu, right? Everything was open, just get your right, shots. Right, right, right. And the stats as far as deaths, illness weren't really weren't that off, right? Of course, the extreme country was like a little bit lower, but it wasn't that low. Like, okay, it was worth all this extreme stuff that mm -hmm. had these numbers that low, right? Mm -hmm. Just that is like minimal difference in numbers, you know. Right. And and I I don't know how well the one thing because it was kind of set the rule easier for them, it's because they're it's island. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's you, a great point. you had to go through somewhere from a border yeah. and you're you, not driving you're not driving going through and passing through <laughs> yeah you're not driving yeah. to see a japan yeah, or whatever exactly. thing is. yeah and then, gosh it's just in the beginning you know, first uh, i think that at least they had like a 10 days of a quarantine mm -hmm. right everybody you had you you stayed in a hotel and then you can't even go to the hallway yeah you had to stay in a hole i mean you have stayed in the room for 10 days and, yeah and they dealt I don't with know how, many people, how many people are batshit crazy doing that you know right and then like i have a, well i have one one of my friends who actually went back because her uh, i think one of her parents were sick or something and she took two small kids and you, know, you can imagine if you stay in a one small hotel room <laughs> with the two little kids and then they'll deliver yeah deliver you a bento box or something like a three times a week but it's a it's not something that the kids can eat three days you know three meals a day and then they i heard that a day like a randomly do call you with a video and say show me where you are and they'll keep tracking with the gps yeah and then i i heard that like a, uh, most of the time they call between eight and four or something during the week uh, uh, you know work hours so people are kind of went to the convenience store after 4 p.m <laughs> and they're thinking that oh, they're not going to call me but then one runs in a while they call and say show me where you are <laughs> uh, my, then, my camera's uh, not working right exactly, now exactly so there's a lot of extreme um tracing to make sure that you are staying where you are and it, it, yeah it, it just like a, i'm sure people will go crazy in that environment so what do you think about this? I know in China, they're doing this other social, social media, like scores, right? You're like, if you do something bad, your score goes down, you can't do this. And like, they're tracking every level you have. Like I said, I said thing on the internet where like, they have a setup where the kids in class, the, the computer can tell if they're actually paying attention, right? Mm -hmm. And they had a lower score, higher score. I mean, that's mm -hmm. like some, that's some, some, to me, some scary stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think in that sense, China, China, it seems to have, it's a whole separate I think, level. But yeah, in Japan is not as much. Mm -hmm. But but I think what is going on with the social media right now is really everything about rating, right? Yeah. And then people, and then another thing that in Japan, I think this is a bad habit of Japanese people. That are, again, this is my own opinion. But if you 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 because you can say anything you want without telling you who you are, right? Because you can use whatever the yeah, front, made, know, up names. made up names yeah. and, and then you can criticize people and that's that something is really going on right now just to kind of yeah it's just making criticizing people in in endless endlessly yeah i'm a and, big believer that there should not be no any anonymous on the internet right it's, you put, i mean you right. could, i mean you could put like you know gmc 1921 or whatever but mm -hmm. somehow they have to go and find out see who you are right right you exactly because to me like you no know, Twitter cowards out there, you know, saying all this stuff, you know. Yep. And they, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. If you can't say it straight out with your own name, don't yeah. say it. And yeah. that's what I, yeah. But that I, unfortunately, though, I think it just that's the social media allows that. Mm -hmm. So I see that. I guess it's an unfortunate side of that a lot that people are dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. So for your own startup, what's been some challenges for you with your startup? 
Ah. And you, you can't say everything. <laughs> it, I think it just did. I knew, now I know the what I didn't know. And that's the challenge, I think, because I wish, I always go back in hindsight. I wish I knew this five years ago, no, but it's right. too late. <laughs> I know everything is, it's, 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 a, it's a challenge, but uh, I didn't know how hard it is to market. It, that's the one thing I, I thought, right? I mean, I think that's like a miracle. You need some, some, some kind of miracle portion to be able to tell what works and what doesn't. And nobody knows that 100%, but I wish I could have, I just learned, I, I, I wish I studied it a little bit more what what works what sticks better than anything else you know so that i don't waste my time or money and but i didn't want i weren't really yeah i i, I don't get i i didn't think i did enough homework in terms of marketing so you want to go back in time and do it all over again <laughs> if i could <laughs> if i could but then you learn yeah during the time anybody yeah. right you yeah. and me and all the people who are doing in the startup we we learn from our experience so but i, I you know I, i'm glad i did and then yeah i mean it, it's nothing it's nothing easy so but it, I, I enjoyed it and i'm glad that i started so what's something fun about being a, doing a startup creativity yes, yes. <laughs> Right, not yep. nobody's telling you you can't do this, you can't do yep. that. As long as within the you know within the border border of the law mm -hmm. that allow you, you can do all kinds of kind of way with you when yes. you approach it. So the the creativity you can use creativity okay. to approach the issues and problems, or even just new things. So I, I like that. It's yeah, you don't have a box that you have to stay in. And. So you, is your husband with your startup too, or he does? does no, he, he 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 does. He's a, he's an artist. Okay, but he does have a day job, and and that's what you know. So I don't let him not let him, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said it's just just you know, this is my thing, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna work on it. And yeah, let's talk about this. Talk about how how important it is to have like your spouse support you if you have a startup. Oh, right? that is huge. I mean, don't you think, Jason? Yes. <laughs> anyone in your family or friends and i mean if you don't have a support that's a really lonely place to be at because you know i quit my day job to do this and your spouse or a partner who doesn't really agree with you that i because i mean you're going to be losing your means of making yeah. a living you know you don't know what's going to happen in your future um unless you have a 100 percent support that will be a I mean, it could cause a problem yeah. in a relationship. And I think it has to be actually actual support. It can't be, you know, like I support you, but every day they send you a, a, a job description. Hey, they're hiring for this, right? You should check it out, right? Right, right, right. exactly. Like, I mean, it's it just like, a, you know, my husband too, is just that he's still worried because one, you're going to have to, I mean, that's realistic because we have a, a, a child with a special needs and you kind of, he think about, right? What, what's going to happen to him? We need to really save money as much as we can. I yeah. mean, that's the first thing as a parent. Yeah, of course, I I'm totally get that. But in the same time, for me, when I'm not happy, I can't be a good parent. If I'm sad that because I'm going to, how do I say? Well, just because, so, so let's say if I stayed as a, a, an accountant and working for a large public accounting company, I would have probably made more money or I had a more vacations and whatnot, but that just didn't really make me feel, you know, it, it just, I didn't feel like that's I can do forever. And uh, that didn't make me happy hundred percent of the time all the time. And that's, I don't, I don't believe you can be a good parent at the end of the day. So, you know, it's it just the all kinds of how you see it, but. So this question for you, like, I think every founder needs to have a red flag, right? Like what makes them stop? What's your red flag? Like if this happened, like you would have to stop and get a job. Like if you didn't get like product market fit or like within three years, you didn't have yeah, the oh, sales yeah. or. Probably if I had to spend another twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, keep going, then yeah, this will be, you know, it's something that it's not sustainable. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I have a budget that I can spend for now. Now that because I mean, Apple has already 
predictable. And so uh, it, it, in terms of that, there's a lot of money layout, I mean, outlays. But yeah, the continuing to keep this going. And if I, somebody told me, oh, it's going to take another hundred thousand dollars. And they said, no, yeah, that's not, that's more worth it. Okay. Right? Um, so next talk about why you're doing a community empowerment solution mm -hmm. versus something else. Because I believe in a community and, and then, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, maybe it's like little cheesy or. I don't know how to say it. people are like, oh, community. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course. But personally, that what community empowers a lot of stuff. And then can I tell you one story? That beginning of the year. So after three years of the COVID, I was finally able to go back to Japan at the end of December last year to see my mom. And on the way back, so my my son and I went, and my my husband was here. Um he didn't go. And we came back on January 3rd. And I usually pay attention to my son's, what he's doing, going through whatever. And it, in Tokyo, it was just that, that particular day, it was so crowded in Narita Airport. And it was long line and going through the security. And somehow the security was just, it was very, it was disorganized. And some people went this way, it, it doesn't want to be that way. And I was like, I couldn't. So I kept, I, I was keep looking at my son, what he's doing because he was taking out his computer and all that. So I was like too much paying attention to my son's, what he's doing. I, <laughs> I lost track of my own computer. And I thought, so then you go through the security, right? You, you think that you put everything in. I didn't realize that until I got to the Canada that I didn't have my laptop. So I left Tokyo without my laptop. Then I was like in Vancouver, Canada, I was like uh, layover and then coming back to Seattle. Then I realized that, why is my laptop? <laughs> it's not there. And I was like, did it? So it, and then I realized that, oh, it got to be in Tokyo because that's the only time that I actually open my bag and take it out. So I got home and then I called the Narita airport and uh, asked, do you lost and found? Um, do you have my uh, laptop? <laughs> blah blah blah. This is the serial number, no. all that. And you say, You're lucky. Well, yes, we have it. <laughs> I was like, Yes, thank you. But then that's in Tokyo. I'm in Seattle. <laughs> I was like, What? How am I going to get the laptop laptop back? And I called the FedEx and said, uh, I have a laptop that I need to be picked up. And how much is it gonna cost me? They said about thousand dollars to yeah a thousand dollars to ship it and then within I, I needed to have it because that, that was the only one, one laptop that i and then i think it was day i would after next day or day after i need to do some sort of presentation or some kind of application that i need to do there was a due date so i was like oh my gosh i really need this and then i was recognized like what can i do so then am i really pay thousand dollars or what, what's my choice so I kind of went through my head and said, like, what can I do? Then it's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go through my community and see if anyone out there that are going through a Tokyo airport right now, and maybe they can, she can just, you know, he can actually pick up my laptop and come home. After, I don't know, few, few, maybe two, three hours, I found someone who was going through literally heading to the Tokyo airport and I was able to connect it with her and I told her here's what happened I want you to go to a, a lost and found department uh, well, I'll take I'll arrange everything and I'll give her your name all that and yeah she she was able to get that my laptop and within 24 hours I had my laptop back in my hand and we're not spending a thousand dollars yes and then I talked to this lady and I said, well, thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, it's only took five minutes. I mean, I didn't know. I just showed up and you gave your name and it gave me your laptop and I had to put it in my bag and go. So long story, <laughs> keep long story short. Um, that's the power of community. When you have a really supported community, you can actually, you know, things happen. The miracle happens. 
And then for her, the person who helped me, she literally took five minutes. She didn't have to do anything. Yeah. And for me, that's like a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody these days, phone, laptop. I mean, what do you do without it? I mean, next day you're lost, right? And you feel like you, you I mean, not that. I mean, I think we put too much emphasis on those devices, but the reality is we feel like we lost one arm or yeah, something, we do, yeah. right? My, my whole life is here. Right? Whole life is there. Yeah. So for me, that was a lifesaver action, but she only took five Probably, minutes to, yeah. she's just like, oh, no problem. I mean, sometimes someone like, you know, my wife will ask me, what are you doing you know, next Tuesday? I, I, I have to get my phone. You don't know what you're doing next Tuesday? No, I don't. You know what I'm doing next <laughs> yeah, Tuesday. Have at, exactly. I have to look at my calendar. Yeah. Like, I have no idea what's going on next day or whatever. You know, I have to look at it. You yeah. know? So the, what my point is that community has a power. That's something you can even imagine. And I just keep telling this story because it, it, this happened to me. And without that, without my community, that are people I know, that are people who, you know, I'm connected. I couldn't never imagine having my laptop come in within 20 24 hours who could right so why why focus on child care facilities versus schools or churches or oh, because, thousands of other things right, you could do right because i i mean one is i think it's easier to entry because there's a lot of a uh, uh, there's a numbers of uh, child care providers out there that um who take care of a smaller children because the, um i think it, as a parent i think you you probably agree with me that when the children are younger, this, I mean, it's much harder to coordinate mm -hmm. stuff. So that's why I feel like it's child care providers and then their parents that are who, uh, whose kids attend there are the ones that are who probably most likely to be able to use my yeah, services. So, so most child care kids start going there when they're going to like six years old, right? Mm hmm yeah, like a, from zero to so most of the child. I mean, when you say childcare, it's like usually zero to five, yeah, okay. right? Yeah. So I'm sure you have a plan. Like, what's after the childcare? Like, you're gonna go to a different different facility after childcare to keep this going, or you only be focused right, on childcare? Right. Yeah. And so my focus is, and because I, I, this is one of the things I learned right about marketing. You kind of have to focus on one thing at a time. Try yeah. to go. Yeah. Because that's not really so. I'm focusing on childcare because that's the one thing I really wanna. I mean, that's the where my idea came about. And, and then that same theory can be used for the aftercare once you the child goes to the elementary. Um, it's it's the same scenario, right? So, but but yeah, it, it just a, in terms of the timing, I guess, that I'm focusing and, uh, on. Is this just in Seattle area you're doing right now or no, the entire States? United States. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of looking at other countries as well. But it, Again, you're gonna have yeah. to focus on yeah. one thing at a time. So I've been um, marketing uh, through my email campaigns and whatnot through entire United States. And so well, how do you make, what kind of safety precautions are you doing? Like do like parents have to do a background check to use your service? Like- the good question. There's always like one, you know, random person, like, mm -hmm. you know, right. not a good person, right? Right, exactly. So that's a great question. And I, uh, um, that's a really uh, frequently asked question. So here it is, uh, as part of this app service, no, we don't do background check or we don't even incorporate that. The one that the reason that is one, the childcare provider has already vetted all the parents once. Okay. They know who you are. They know the phone number. They know you're, where you live and they know their children. And this app is specifically um, dedicated for the parents whose children come to a, a particular childcare. So if you are a friend of a parent or something, you can't really get it, use that um, because that's, there's a security um, system, meaning that you have to have a security code to be able to even download it. Okay. And then um, parent has to be verified between the uh, company and the child care to, to prove that you are who you are. So what happened in this situation, right? Like suppose we have three old kids at that child care center and you, and you want me to pick your kid up, right? But for a reason, I have a car wreck or something happens, I can't pick your kid up. What happens then? Is it like right. a backup so, plan or? Right, so, uh, right. so then you can act, there is a communication device. Let's say you, you, you offer to help. Mm -hmm. And then um, and this is, I think what you're saying, you have fed, but you had an accident or something. Yeah. Then there's a communication device where you can actually tell them, hey, I, we can't do this. You can cancel that. 
So okay. then you can, uh, if you are a recipient, I mean, uh, a parent who are asking for it, you can actually click it and then try again. Okay. Yeah. And there's a, how many people can pick a kid up? Like, can you, like, you, can you put like everyone in the child care to pick your kid up if you want to? Or if there's enough, enough uh, participants in there. Okay. So, so the, because one click goes to every, so let's say there's a, a parents, the 30 parents in mm -hmm. this community, in this, around this child care. Uh, yeah, the one click will go to the 30 parents who they say they are available. So there, there is a choice for a parent to be in the app. They say, I'm available this and this and day. And if they say, no, I'm not available, you don't get it. So if there are available parents, 30 of them, they will get all the messages. And whoever accepted first will get that. So, you know, if that person doesn't work out, then you can actually cancel it and then and try again. So how do you protect yourself as far as yourself, your business, like, you know, Mr. Brown picks up someone else's kid, right? And he goes, drinks a beer, has a wreck, or, you know, does something stupid, you know, like, like, how do you protect yourself to make sure you don't get sued, like, when people do dumb stuff and doesn't fall back on you? Right. So, so then that's, that's the where is the privacy and it was a user um, license agreement, which is specifically, this is for, uh, this is not, how do I say, it? this is for a device mm -hmm. to bring, build a community, okay. not that, I, I always say, this is not a right share. Okay. Y you have to do your own, you know, uh, uh, make your own decision. Okay. And also, this is a recommendation or a suggestion, the number one suggestion is you're not going anywhere with the child. Yeah. You wait at the, in front of the daycare or parking lot or even in a car, you're not. So, so there's, no, there's no picking up your, your friend's kid. Yeah, and going doing, and doing, doing errands, going doing the cleaners, exactly, you know. Right, unless unless another parent yeah. and, and then yourself is making an agreement and say, yes, that's what I'm going to do. But that's not, this is not a right share. This mm -hmm. is just a sign out. That, that's the sign out process that we are helping. Yes. So um, child care costs. Mm -hmm. I mean, every known one of those, the craziness, right? Oh, my God. Like, I can't imagine. It's like it, sometimes it's like it's almost like one parent should just like quit the job and just stay at home and watch the kids, right? Because it's almost, almost like you come out even, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it's incredible. And, I, and it's not like you know, like they do the best they can, but it's not. It's not like they're doing like you know, A plus care. Right? Like they're like their PhD doctors teaching mathematics and scientists and STEM to your three year old kid, right? They're like basically like here's a fruit cup, you know, and pudding cup, you know. <laughs> It's just amazing. I, I don't, I, I don't really don't know how, how you people do this these days. Because I heard that, uh, this is before the COVID again, um, some of the childcare centers in downtown Seattle is about 3,000 or more per child. And I, I, I don't know who can afford that. Or maybe those people who are engineers and system engineers and whatnot, or maybe they're, there might be a large, you know, working for a larger company, they can afford it. But in general, though, three thousand dollars a month, and that that's insane. It, it is insane. And then, and then, and then you kind of have to make a decision, right, with your partner. It's like maybe it is better to stay home. One of them wants to stay home and just take care of the child because, yeah, uh, you you might be breaking even. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a tough decision. It is. Um. And so I'm guessing you don't have a tech background, right? Nope, I don't. So talk. I'm a non-tech founder too. Talk about some of the challenges you've had as being a non-tech founder trying to do a tech app. Not understanding the language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really good, uh, uh, you know, developer that who have helped me. But then sometimes, you know, he throw things. Oh, Conoco, the app, um, Apple, you know, wants to do this, this, or Google now do this. I was like, I'm reading it. It's like what the hell does that mean? So I had to kind of ask them, can you just kind of plain language? Yeah. Can you tell me what I need to do? Why, is, why are they telling me that these are the requirements now? Then you're going to have to update it and blah, blah, blah. Because yeah, I mean, you know that too. It's like yeah. they do constant updates. Does something interfere, interfere yeah. with your own thing? And then now you're going to have to like open up and oh, we're going to have to make an up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the part of the the language and then how the system work. And then I just have to kind of learn my own thing, but and then also having a good support, I guess. And how, how did you find your developer? Um, I have kind of gone through um, 
look uh, interview process. I, I went out and, and then interviewed them and what do they think? We kind of so that I can kind of feel I'm, I'm kind of like a really I like to see people and I get some feeling. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I it's just not not on, you know, piece of a paper or even looking at that, not a paper these days. But if you look at an Internet and a yeah. review system, it doesn't really tell me a lot mm -hmm. of stuff to me because you can always ask your friends, that, hey, can I have a five stars or, yeah. you know, just some, some yeah. stuff like that. And so. For me, so I, I requested a few interviews and, and then um, and you, out there. You developers here in Seattle or somewhere else? Here, okay. because I, I was, I know that a lot of people say, hey, do you want to develop an outside country? It's much cheaper. Yes, I agree with that. But I, again, I, I believe in the low, uh, uh, in person connection. Yeah, that's something like doing stuff in person, you know? Yeah, in person connection. That's how you do it, like to try to do like the designs, your platform, website, you know? Yeah. I miss one thing, like, you know, like, your, your designer lives somewhere else. He's seen the designs, and it's but it's, it's, you're in the same room, same whiteboard. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like that. And then you know maybe just doing a little bit like a design of the logo or something like that. You can actually outsource and maybe anywhere and then and then um outside of the United States. But it, it comes down to something really, really that's an important part of your business. And I like to to see the person yeah. in, in and then talk in the real life, not just the over the screen. So that's the one of the things that I really had a, for my own requirement yeah. to feel good about who am I dealing with. So your developer, how do you how do you make you communicate what you want that person to do, right? Because like I say this on my podcast all the time, if you ask a regular person to open the door, you get up open the door, right? The developer, you gotta say, stand up at a 90 degree angle, turn this degree, you know, all the minute details, turn the door handle this, you know, right. and, and then it's not enough detail, right? Yeah. So how do you make sure you're able to communicate what you want the guy to do? So I think he now understand that, or the company president understand that what I intent was in the beginning, I draw the, all the, uh, I think it's, I, I draw the pictures basically <laughs> <laughs> flow of the, this is I, yeah. what I want. I, I made a copy of the cell phone. Mm -hmm. Right. And then here's what it looked like in my head. Yeah. And then, so I made a pages and pages yeah. and pages of that. And this is the flow that I want to be at. If you click this and goes here. So it, it's kind of like a, it's very basic, <laughs> but that's the only way I was able to communicate. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm thinking. So this, if you did this, this is happens. And then it's this. And then, and he, they requested that too. I want to see for the, you know, user experience as well. What do you, what do you, what do they want to be look like? And I, I was able to do, I mean, I was handwriting a few years, but the bot buttons in here. Yeah, <laughs> then, yeah you gotta have a little detail. Gonna, it's gonna, this big, it's this color. Oh, like, exactly, this like, is the font. Like, I still laugh, like, you know, like, I had, like one time a designer, he said, what number do you want your blue? I wanted a blue. <laughs> no, do you have to pick a number? What are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, right, and she so right. laid out all these numbers are blue, and my mind, <laughs> like, what is happening right now? It's exactly, I just want, yeah, I just, just want blue. Yeah. See, that's exactly like, I think it's you know my like, my my. I don't, want to, I don't want to join. I don't do a math class, you know. Yeah, I know. They they'll ask you. It's like what 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 number? It's like what? <laughs> what what do you mean? What number? Uh, not that I had to look at it it's like a Google. And look at, yeah. What is this color number supposed yeah. to be? Yeah. So I learned. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and colors mean like like uh, personality things, you know, like different emotions and stuff, you know, like. Yeah. So the, all those new things that you have to learn about, you know, it, it's like, uh, so now I really appreciate it that I can actually at least understand what they're looking for. So it, it got better and better mm -hmm. what a communication was yeah. in the beginning. It was like, oh my gosh, don't, don't put all these jargons. I don't understand. Yeah. And, but then in the beginning, we, we actually met in person so that they understand what I'm yeah. trying to say. And then, then now these days, it was just the email, you know, and then sometimes I take a video. Okay. Somewhere wrong with this yeah. part. And then I just video and then can you take at it? So how many developers did you actually interview to find the person that was right for you? Three or four. Three or four. Okay. So pretty fast process. Yeah. 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 And I, I, every time it, I, I even got that estimate and mm -hmm. so how much is it? And then I talked about it and then. You know, but then just like a, I don't know, this I, I might be the only one, but a, you know, when you have buy a house or something, you always have something, and it's like this is it, yeah. kind of thing, and then yeah. you you get that feeling too. Oh, yeah. This is the person that I I feel like it should go. And you said you're going to be on both uh, Apple and yeah, Google. both yes, Android and both yeah. So Apple. so you're working on both of them at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. 
So that's that's another reason that it took longer. But no, yeah, they're completely. So, so why you like? I know some people like do that. They do both at the same time. Some some will only go Android. Some will right. only do Apple. Like, why yeah. do you decide like do both at the same time? I I thought about the users, right? Because when you're talking about that, this is not just the one. I mean, if you go to a childcare, you can't really say, "Oh, this is only for Apple users only." Yeah, I mean, all kinds of mixtures of people, right? Yeah. So I just had to think about that if we in order to have. I mean, to help parents to be able to use this, you just have to be have it both at the yeah. same time because otherwise it's just, what if it's only one Apple users and then five Android users? Yeah. One person can create a community. Yeah. yeah, so that that was the reason. But I, I know that it's, I mean, downside is it takes way longer. It takes way longer, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you ever use that social media app called Clubhouse? Mm -hmm. So that I think that's why they failed, right? Because like Clubhouse are the hot thing or whatever. For some reason, they only focus on Apple, right? No mm -hmm. Android, no Android, right? And they missed that opportunity where everyone was curious about it. You know, I want right. to get on it, right? Mm -hmm. And by the time they put Android on there, it's like the opportunity passed. But it, right? passed it, yeah. That's exactly how I felt. I mean, and and so it, it just need to be. It, for me, you kind of have to look at the audience. What who what kind of a audience? And then I guess in, in terms of the device, I'm sure there's more Apple users than in general. Yeah. Um, maybe the different in generations, but uh, yeah, for me, I, I couldn't really tell. I can't estimate how many parents will be using Apple. Yeah. <laughs> it could be depend on the region too, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. What else? Um. The next talk about your pilot. Is your pilot going on right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk yep. about your pilot. Yeah. So I'm actually going through the. Entire United States, I'm not going through myself, but personally, but uh, I am campaigning to each state and then I send out the uh, campaign emails and, and see if they want to interested in a pilot. And if they are a pilot, then I'm completely, you know, uh, this is completely free. So they can try it out and see what happens. And I'm just all I'm, I'm looking for is the um, feedback and see if there's anything else particular thing that I, I can improve um, and because of the app anything could happen because some it could be if you don't have a wi-fi maybe just a cell itself doesn't really work as fast or those kind of things i have done a lot of testing on my own i got a like i'm sure you too like i have a three or four different phones but it, there's a limitation because yeah. you're I, i'm here in seattle and then i'm interested in people in um, i don't know uh, South Carolina, how did it work? Yeah. It depends on their location. And what I noticed is now is I, I get a lot of more interest in uh, suburb, not suburb, but it's more like a rural areas or where in a, a lot more underserved community population and more population in underserved communities. So um, those communities in a technology might be limited. So I, I think that's another reason I just want to um, want more people to try it out and to get more information to what can I improve in the future releases. So for your, for your platform, you know, like how for this, like a lot of people, they think they're tech said, but they're not right. They have no clue how to do tech. They, they, you know, like how to, yeah, so, so, how do you make sure like your apps are going to be like, like I won't say dummy proof for people, like, mm -hmm, you know, like right, dummy one-on-one -on -one, right, that anyone can pick it up right, and use it. Right. So th that's a, actually, that's a really good question because for my audience, my users, uh, child care providers, first of all, child care providers themselves are tend to be low tech industry. And some are, some big, large corporations or franchises, they has all kinds of technology and they, they do stuff. But the reality is there's a family, you know, I'm sure you heard of the family childcare providers. I mean, they have like up to like maybe 10, 12 kids at home. And I mean, they have nothing, right? And so I, my job is to make sure that they, these people are comfortable using the app. So I, I make a lot of videos, to how-to videos, and I make a flyer for specific to, everything is QR code. Okay, do this, watch this video, do this. So so it is more, I, I customize it each childcare, if the childcare providers are very interested, I'll customize it depending on the, um, the audience. And then just video after video after videos to make sure that they can watch 
and then follow. Okay. okay. Talk about this. You know, sometimes like we're a founder, like we're like struggling, man. My life sucks. I'm not making progress. <laughs> then if you think it, but then you think about it, like what you did last six months. Oh wow! Like I'm way far ahead the last six months, right? Can you talk about that some? Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of interesting because so all of a sudden the traffic picked up for my request for a, a pilot. And it's, I don't know why it's starting January is like almost every week. I got, sometimes I have three or four appointments on, um, and I would say, if you believe in that and you know that it works, just keep going. I mean, that's the only thing it's just, you just have to have a passion or at least keep on going until they sell. So you gotta have another hundred thousand dollars, right? <laughs> exactly. And if you can, I mean, to me, it's like, if you can actually afford to keep, you know, a bit of minimum maintenance in terms of money. And all you have to do is you, you send a, you know, for me right now, it's like a mode, right? Because I, I'm recurring the same thing over and over again. It's not enough. You know, I know that I had to do more, but at least it started happening. People are being aware of that. Yeah. I have this and all that. So I would say, yeah, that's correct. If you are at the good place, the, all you have to do is really market, given that what, the tools that you have, yeah. then don't give up. We just keep going. Can you talk about how you did an email campaign? Like, how did you decide what people to reach out to? You know, because like, it's not like you go on LinkedIn, like, you know, do a booming search on LinkedIn, like, like you know, working parents, right? Like, how did you find these people in your email campaign? Well, for me, it's the child childcare providers. Okay. So the childcare providers, uh, they're all licensed through states, and then their, and their information is available publicly, and also um, websites and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that's how I, I call them or I, I actually solicit, um, hey, here's the things that's happening. Would you like to answer my questions? You know, so so all kinds of different ways that I try to get the um, email addresses and and then right. And who are you using for your email campaign? What, what, uh, what? Right now, it, because it's a it's it's uh, very reasonable. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm using. I'm using Flowdesk. Okay, I haven't heard of them. Yeah, it, it's very reasonable price. Okay. It's about less than three hundred dollars, and you can actually email as many as you want. Oh, well, I'm gonna check yeah, out. yeah. Flow so, desk. so it, it it is to me is like because other email um platforms they'll charge you right, mm -hmm. depending on how many email yeah. or subscribers. This one it doesn't. Yeah. So I just like okay. And it, it was a, I don't know, I mean, still, they call it a pilot stage, but they, they may be. But, okay. uh, but as somebody, um, one of the, uh, uh, the marketing person kind of introduced me to that. And I was like, oh, I'm going to try it because I was really like, I don't know what to use. Yeah. And there's so many of them out there, right? Yeah, exactly. And with different price points, different you know. Different price points. And then at a certain point, your sub subscribers hit some amount, and they'll start charging this a lot. And, and of course, they don't tell you. They're going they to don't tell you, yeah. And, and then for me, again, is I'm very, I mean, I'm, I have to be under my budget, mm -hmm. and I can't spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars yeah. a month and do that. And then Flowdesk allow me to do that right now. So I'm very happy with that fact that, I, I mean, it, it, yeah, there's a lot of things that I wish they just changed and improved, but I can't beat that. I mean, I, I mean, they can't beat the price. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. So who's going to pay for this in the future? The the parent, the child care facility, so the, the, kid, the, the kid? Kid, right, exactly, <laughs> right. But but for now, I mean, here's what I'm saying. It, it, it kind of could be a combination of it's a, 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 a subscribing. Um, the parents can actually pay for through the um, child care provider. Okay. So child care provider can actually, you know, pay for it, but they can actually turn around and, and charge okay. um, uh, parents. And that's kind of like a subscribing model, one of the subscribing model that I'm kind of thinking. So you knew, I just thought about this, like, suppose there's a child care center, we'll say like, we'll say like Holland Park, Dallas. Holland Park is like real upscale in the area, million dollar homes. And of course they'll probably charge a lot more for child care, right? Or you might go to like, what's the East St. Louis, you know, about, yep. you know, not as good neighborhood, like mm -hmm. property tax low. Are you going to charge different prices based on the economic neighborhood? Or so That's what price? I'm thinking, because I think that I like the uh, upper scale community to support mm -hmm. the underserved community. Yeah. You know, because because I, my philosophy, you know, I, I believe in the philosophy of community. If you have something that you can share, please share. Mm -hmm. And then because it, it, that's the only way it works. Yeah. So next, I read somewhere where it has um, how how are children's lives enriched? Like I think you said, it's going to enrich the lives of children. 
how is this platform going to reach children's lives? Well, so so here, here is what I think. Can I don't know if you remember, like, let's say, really long day at work. You come to the child care or child provider or even at the school. You pick up your child. And then when you're young, you know, that's what they do. But it, it, they they whine or they cry. They want something. And that really, it, it, you know, and then I, I, I'm, so let's say if you are stressed out and then came to child care and then you, you're you running late, whatnot, or even if you're not running late, you're like, you, you come to the child care and you're so tired and then you pick up your child and your child are, you know, oh, I don't want to go home or what, it just have a fit. And then that really actually affects you, right? Because we're all human being. And when you're especially stressed out, you just don't deal well with the kids. Yeah. So the ultimate goal is to, for me, is the parents can be supported or supported by each other so that our stress will be a little less so that you, we can cope with the, the kids and you go home with a happy face and then, and then kids will respond to that. Yeah. That's, that's my belief because when you're sad, when you're tired, you are angry for some other reason, the kids actually really, kids are really good at observing things and they kind of take that and then in, sometime it might be internalize it or sometime it will you know, expressed in different ways. And then there wasn't a study actually done in 2022. Is that 2022? I might be wrong, but the uh, the one of the uh, university did was the, when uh, the parents are supported, the working parents are supported uh, as a community and then reciprocate support, uh, children had a less behavioral issues. And then that's what I ultimately, my goal is to make, I, I want kids to be happy, growing up happy and not having a traumatized and then some, some sort of a experience. And then you want to do that. I think you have to support the entire family, yeah. especially parents. And then I know that because it happened to me. My parents had a lot of stress and then it affected me so much when I was growing up. Yeah. I mean, you can imagine like, you know, you, you had a long day at work, you're frustrated, you're kind of pissed off. You go to pick up your kid, your kid like, I wanted mommy to pick me up, not you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, you know, yeah. screw you, kid. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. What, what's you okay? Stay here until your mom comes get yeah, you. Then, you yeah, know? exactly. And the kids, you know, the kids are kids. The kids yeah. They do all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then as a parent, you know, you're not supposed to take it personally. Yeah. What do you do? What yeah. do you do? You're like, oh my God, it's like a. Like, what, what kind of devil, what, demon child am I raising? Yeah, who are you? You know, but 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 that's how we react. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and, and so I think I'm hoping that it's like a, if we have as a parents have a less stress in our lives, we can we can deal situation better, you know, instead of like running. I mean, I done it before, right? It's like, oh my gosh, I had to really get to this place and, and then I pick up my child. And then you're like first frazzled by the time you get to the child care. And yeah. you're like, and then you, you, your son goes like, mommy, I you know, I, I want this ice cream right now. Yeah. And it's like crying or whatever. And you're like, oh my God, are you kidding me? And I don't, I don't, I didn't react well. Yeah. And then that, and then you go home and you're all oh, like, it's, everybody is just in a bad mood. And it just, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't do well for the, you know, mental it, state. Mental, mentally. That's, yeah. that's what I'm, yeah. So I think it's a good follow-up question, right? Yeah. So you remember back in the day when, when Steve Jobs bought the, bought the iPad, iPod out? And, and people don't remember this back then, that other device, right? That's way, way, way better, right? I had more stores, more songs, better audio quality, everything is way, way better, right? But they would say, by the XYZ, we have 1.56235, all these numbers and stats. And he just said, a thousand songs in your pocket, right? Immediately, everyone knew what it was, right? Even though it was a fair product, well, not a fair product, it was as good as other ones, like, are you going to buy something that says like all these stats and numbers? You don't understand what a thousand songs in your pocket, right? So having said that, what's your thousand, thousand songs in your pocket for your company, right? Like, what's your big mission statement to change the world, so to speak? Mm, that's a hard question. To help people fear, mm -hmm. I would say. Okay. Meaning that we, we, we kind of, I don't know how, how, how to 
express this. In this culture or any other culture, maybe the world kind of learn to not to trust other people. But the fact is, though, you do have a, everybody has a friend, right? I mean, most of us do, and we don't do background check on our friends. So I'm kind of basing my philosophy in the same thing. I'm not asking parents to, to be a best friends day one. You're going to have to do your own homework, but I'm providing the services so that you can actually can connect right away and check out each other and ask questions and talk to at the child care when you're passing by or you can you ask hey do you have a five minutes we can kind of, kind of introduce ourselves you know so i because every time people ask how did do you do background check on the parents it's like no i don't this is not the service to do bring you that it's not the child how do i say it's not a child care service you're gonna have to do your own homework. This is a community building and it takes for everybody to put in their own effort to become a place, a safe place. I mean, create a safe place for the community. So this is probably a bad example, but this I just got back from Vegas today, right? My friend had a wedding. Oh. My friend had a wedding <laughs> on Sunday, right? And so I, my mother friend Kyoki came to visit me from my past, so we're hanging out. And so it was like 10 of, 10 of us guys, right? None, we knew, none of us needed to. Only thing was we all knew, we all knew the groom, right? So that was like our background checker, right? Mm -hmm. I got invited by the groom, you got invited by the groom. So we're going we're gonna to presume that we're all good people, right? Like there's no background checks. So I don't go on LinkedIn. Like you said, I'll talk with someone, you know, no list. Hey, seeing that there's other people, you're just going to be there so I can check them out, right? So that's, you show up and the background check was, you know, we all know the one guy, right? Mm -hmm. So kind of same thing with the parents thing, right? Right. Yeah, and you, you do your homework, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, you don't really ask the you know the person you met first time mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, can?" But so they, that's why there is a device and a communication device. I'm texting, or I have the each parent take a video mm -hmm. and say introduce yourself and just to let you show face and say, "I do look like this, and this is what I do, and I'm available this time, and let me know next time you see me at the childcare, just to come over and we can chat." And you just kind of have to you have to. I mean, it's a building block. Yeah. You have to build a relationship, mm -hmm. and that's exactly it. So next, talk about date nights, which I think is a fun, a, a yeah, fun, fun part the of fun it, part right? Of, yeah, yeah, the fun part, the date nights. Yeah, so the date nights, I mean, I'm sure that you, know, you and your uh, spouse or partner, once you have a child, I mean, date night, what is that, right? <laughs> because you, if you are able to afford it to have a child, I mean, babysitter, great you know but a lot of us don't really have a lot of a disposable income after you pay what three thousand dollars in the yeah. child care in the during the day so then you're like oh it's okay that's too much it's just like it's hard to and and then maybe the teenagers in your neighborhood might be able to do it but sometimes teenagers are not really that responsible um i had my own experience you know it's like uh mm, <laughs> right and so, but then what if, if you are able to do something to help others during the day, during the week, and then you can ask other parents that you know of that have a, kids that are around the same age, and they say, hey, I want to have a day night with my husband or my, my uh, a partner. Can you watch my kids for three hours? And then they'll probably say, oh, yeah. I mean, if they are available, yeah. and then you, you don't. And in, in this, my system, you don't have to feel guilty because you it's a point system. You earn points, you give points based on what you have helped others. So in that way, you already know somebody, right? And then you might have already know the other child and you hopefully they have already met a few times at yeah. the childcare and that would be reciprocal. And, and then you can actually do the same for the, the other um, couple. That's like a, a good question. Like, but the point system, I'll make this up. Like, suppose like um, one parent has like been on for six months, have no points, right? Do they like are, are they gonna get kicked off because they're participating yeah, enough, well, or <laughs> are, they, are they get bonus points, get more yeah, points? So, like, so you know, that would be a, right now. It's a begin with a pilot program, so I'm kind of that's another thing that I learn about. I like to learn from the parents is the uh, I'll give a hundred points to begin with, so you know, so that you start with that. And then I monitor on um, then at certain points, if you got negative, you will be you won't be able to use it. So you're gonna have to arm um, back on to to what 
the level where you you can use them. And so again, this is again, you know, I might be a dreamer, but it's I think it is a um education for the parent for for our company to do educate them, hey, this is the recipient community. You don't take advantage of the people. Yeah. And then yeah, and it, of course I'm sure there are people eventually that will be just a take, take, take. But then in that case, then there is a monitoring system so that I can actually kick them off. <laughs> and so this is the way, probably way down to in the weeds, but are people going to be like, do like give a, like advanced like points to other people? Like I have all these points. Yeah, that, that, that's a lot. Exa you. Yeah, exactly. So they can actually transfer to each other if okay. they wanted to. And, I mean, that's great because that's another way of community helping each other. So... And the only thing I didn't want to do is I didn't want to tie that to the money. I, that's not, a, you know, it's, it's not a, uh, you can't really sell it to other people because that's not the point. It's you, you have to do your work to earn the points. And, and then that's the point that you just to kind of. Um, what, what's your goal for your policy? Like get a certain number of beta testers? Is it got a certain number of paid customers? What's well, your goal? The ultimate goal is really getting a paid Cust paying customers but right now I, I i like to get more i mean nationwide i like to get a different cases of a usage so that i can learn from it what works what doesn't because i don't definitely don't think that this is a complete last version of the app there could be some other things that i yeah. could have made add on you probably get some feedback you never thought about getting right right, right. Like, oh man that's a brilliant idea how come i didn't think of that yeah and and, and, and i i have other ideas but it uh, one, I mean, uh, again, one thing at a time. Yeah. That's the thing. Because that, ideas cost money to execute, right? Exactly. So I have a whole bunch of other ideas, but still, you're going to have to do something to make, you know, uh, uh, clue it once and get feedback and make an improvement. So for me, it, yeah, it, it, it is just really in the process. And so you've bootstrapped so far, right? Yeah. Uh, is a plan of it's try to raise funds later on? Do you try to bootstrap the whole thing and just use paid well, customers? For me, that I, I'm more focusing on, I really want to get the data for the usage traction and the numbers tractions and, stuff, yeah. and feedback because that's more important than anything yeah. else. I mean, the money, yeah, it's great, but it, it it's that's not the ultimate goal. Anyways, to me, is I if I can have um, the users that I tells me that hey this is useful and very useful and it will help me so much but it, here's a few things that you can improve it and then it's great and then depending on that if i have a money yeah i'll do it and then but it's just that really um i'm not saying this because i already built it money is gone yeah i want people to use it yeah <laughs> yeah so talk about how you came the name for your company task ki yes so task ki and then this is kind of i think people think like what is this dash in between all that stuff but there's a reason um taskia in japanese means to help each other that's it because i when i was thinking about the word and it, how should i call this all oh, i came i had a i had a 500 different names that i came up with i was brainstorming and it's just nothing really stick with me and then someday i was kind of thinking in japanese i was like how do i call this if i were in japan or what then it's like that's ki oh that's it and how do i spell it and i, I was doing that and then you know i'm sure you, everybody else does it you did the um domain then there's a lot of easier spelling was already taken so the solution was to come up with the closest i could get to it task ki nice nice so next, yes, on ground rules. Like I guess the ground rules are pretty much like your values. Yes, the values and it's the rules to play nice. Yeah. And then again, is I always say ground rules. You know, you tell you tell your child the golden rules, right? That you know, it's a, you have to treat other people in a way that you want to be treated, and that's it. You don't you have to play nice. If you if you are a parent, you have to know that. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about this, like. I think most, most entrepreneurs start off like, I mean, they know it's going to take a long time, right? They're like, you know, within a year or two years, I'll be good, right? But the process is way longer than that, right? How have you like been like, you know, be able to like, you know, stay motivated or stay on the same path? Like, man, like I've been doing this for like a long time, oh, right? No. Like what's going on, right? Oh, man, that is the hardest. The motivation, keep motivation and then keep motivated and just to keep at it every day. Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately um that that is the i think one of the hardest thing next to me it was the next marketing right uh, but then i have a good uh 
a coach that uh, is a paid coach, but I decided that it was for me to have a coach, someone who's really knows my business and then my personality. And it's kind of keep telling me, asking me, what are you doing, Conoco? Yeah. What's your goal this week? What do you need to do? So, so, so I, I do have somebody who's really taking accountability is my job. And so in a way, I, I, I don't think I could have done it by myself because it's just, it's the lonely place, right? You t everybody talks about yeah. entrepreneur is a lonely place. It, it's the myth out there, you know, that, yeah. it's so sexy, you know, you're, you're, you know, on the yacht, drinking beer and mimosas, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's like, hey, you know. <laughs> writing down and you know, all the new idea, but that's not that. It, it's a very lonely place. Yeah, I know like this, but like when Silicon Valley Bank closed down, all the stuff on Twitter, like people like, they don't need no money. If you have a tech startup, you're immune anyway, right? Or not working no money, you know, all this shit that came out like, what? Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, exactly. So uh, for me, it, it, it is every day, it's it's it, it's up and down, right? It's like in the morning, you feel like things are pure, feeling great. Oh my gosh, I had another pilot appointment. Yay. The next thing, you're like, Dun. Yeah. you know, it, it's just like a really a roller coaster. Then you have and, the pilot appointment, they tell you like, this platform sucks and it's horrible. Right, like, exactly. I would never buy this from yeah. you. I know where, I mean, I'm trying to get a patent, right? Mm -hmm. And then... You know, I had a meeting with a patent examiner and said, they're, it's like, are you kidding me? And it, it, this, this kind of a up and yeah. downs and, and then, but, but you get, I think it, it, it you get used to it after a while, Yeah. but then, uh, but the struggle as a lonely entrepreneur, I don't think that's just, just disappears and then motiv keep motivating yourself. Yeah. It's the hardest because you can always give up and say, yeah. I'm too tired. Yeah, I'm a firm believer that only way you feel as an entrepreneur is if you quit, right? Yeah. That's the only way. Yeah. And then like people like to talk about, you know, if I get a hundred customers, be easier, a thousand customers, I raise money. It's just some more problems, right? Mm -hmm. And I got to take care of a hundred customers, you know, like, they give them money, like you got to give them a product, right? right. You got to hire people. And right. it's like, it, exactly. there's always more stuff. More stuff. There's, there's, it, it, it's the challenges are endless. And, and then another thing that I don't, you know, I have ideal customers that I have a vision. So I don't let that, I, I, that's the core of my business. Mm -hmm. And I don't let go like this, just no matter what people say, because if you lose that core, the one thing it's important, right? Just so anybody said, what's your ideal customer? And yeah. you have a persona mm -hmm. and I, I don't let that way go. It, it, otherwise you're like all over the place. And then, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about your coach, right? Like, how did you pick your coach? Cause like, so it's like, you know, all the time you'll get emails, you know, let me be a coach. Like, first of all, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, second of all, like, like I'll get messages on LinkedIn email. I noticed you're, you're, um, you're uh, recruiting, whatever, hiring, whatever. It had nothing to do with what I'm doing. Right. And like all the coaches are, you need a coach, you need a coach, you know, like, well, why are you, I mean, it's like, it's a lot of these coaches, like they approach you, they, they don't say like what they've done in the past. Like I successfully, you know, mentored like 10 CEO founders, now they're doing this. And so it's like, mm -hmm. that's generic stuff, right? So how did you pick your coach? So when I decided, I actually met a few people and I was- um, And were you looking for a coach this time or they were looking I, for I was, I was more like, I was looking for, instead of like a business success coach, I was looking for a life coach because it was a time I was at, was still working as a CPA. It was like a, just a time of the, the where I really didn't know what, what I want to do with my life. Am I going to stay in this spot for the rest of my life? Or can I really start something with my life that I feel like I feel comfortable with and I feel more proud, right? So so life coach is the one that I was looking for. And I have met a few people and I interviewed them. And then a few people that are kind of a little flaky that after a few we met and then, then it's oh yeah that started and then they stopped talking to me <laughs> and stuff like that so then I asked another person that uh, do you know any good a uh, life coach and then the person talked to another person and then introduced me a, a current coach that I have from uh, east coast and it's kind of interesting I never met that person in okay. person so it's all over zoom 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Every day. I mean, I mean, not every day. I mean, yeah. That's I have a coach every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have a coach every day, but but every week we, yeah. we meet every week. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, it's kind of weird. There, there is some connection, and then I asked her all kinds of questions. Like, have you coached someone who's from other country in a different oh, that's culture? A good question. That's a good question. How do you do? You understand? That, I mean, you know, I'm I have a different background. My English is second language. Do you, have you ever met someone like that and in quotes? And so I kind of had a, all okay. my questions that I how, and then th- there is a always, again, going back to just like a house that you like, you found, yeah. you found some connection. And then that's how I kind of started. I, I feel like I, this person is really understands me. And even though she said, no, I never walked with anyone who's from other countries or other cultures and that, but I kind of felt like, I think she she's she understands. Yeah. Me. Yeah. So this is a worst coaching scenario I've ever seen, right? So I had a good friend. She was looking for a coach. And so we went to meet this person, right? I just happened to be at the same time. I, I waited to grab some coffee. And so then at 30 minutes, she came back to me and the coach told her, like, I have a special going right now, fifteen hundred dollars. You need to pay me fifteen hundred dollars now to reserve my services, or it's gonna go to three thousand dollars. I like what? And I know you didn't pay, right? So I don't know, of course I didn't pay, right? But it was like high pressure tactics, you know, like I can do this for you. I need the money now, right? And she worked for this big time coaching thing oh in Seattle, my. right? Yeah. That's a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, get away from this person. Yeah. I mean, I, I think just like any other service, right? I believe that if somebody who who feels that there's a value, they'll pay for it no yeah. matter what. Yeah, exactly. So I wow, that's scary. Yeah, that's my worst worst one I've I've seen. Um, so next one we do. Um, I want to go through your, put up this video that's on YouTube real fast. Yeah. So talk us through it. This that's right that's here, the right? one. Yeah, that's the one that. I... Maybe for working with you, for everyone, it's everyone's bad. Your needs is number one, and your child's daycare is closing in fifteen minutes. There's no way you can get to daycare before it closes. But you're not stressed. How do you stay so calm? When you tap hang on with a click of a button, you know your trusted singer is fine. You did all these videos yourself. I had a help the video photographer, but what uh, creator. Yeah. I came up with the these images. Okay. And yeah. In fact, many of the ways to help your child to get interested. And hired a professional voice um, actress. So why invitation only? Oh, because the your child care provider has to be the core of that. Okay. You wanted to use it for the security purposes and how everything is works. Okay. Um, 
So you already talked about your company some, you know, but but can you go like in more detail, like how you started it, what you focus on now, what your, your big dream vision for it is moving forward? Right. So the how it started, I kind of touched on it a little bit because it was my own experience. I was running late. I was already stressed out after the school, after uh, work, um, picking up a, my child and the uh, last minute, um, sometimes it's late and I felt guilty and embarrassment. And, it, you know, you had to call, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm running five, 10 minutes late. But sometimes you never know because there's a traffic and you might be wind up coming in there half an hour late. And, and then my child, by the time I got to the childcare, he's alone thinking about, where's my mom? Everybody else is gone. And I just, you don't want to see your child's face. It's like, you know, sad. And it's like, a, you know, he, he felt like abandoned or something. And, and then the child care providers, are, I mean, the staff were great. It's all, oh, don't worry. They always say, just drive carefully. But I know they feel like, okay, what time is this? See you late again. See you late again. And I really kind of felt like, what, what can I do to just, and and, and, and then, you know, I, I couldn't really come up with that idea during the time that I, my son was at that, you know, child care age. But then later on, when, you know, after 20 years of working as an accountant, I just, there was something happened because that one of my uh, closest, I guess, supervisor and also slash friend who had uh, uh, suffered cancer and then she, she passed away within literally like a, uh, we, as soon as we found that she was ill and then she she died within like a month or something. And that was just a shocking to me. And then that was a waking, waking up cold and say, your, your, your life can be just gone yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And I, I just really had to think about that my life and say, because I mean, that was a great job and it was a great company, but I, just for me, it, it just felt like it's, it's, this isn't something that I just don't want to do the rest of my life. And I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not really that great accountant because I think I'm a creative person. I'd rather do something more creative and you can't do creative stuff with the numbers. So I was kind of thinking about the opportunity and uh, that's the where the earlier we talked about the coach and then I was kind of going back and forth. And, this is, and I thought about, oh, maybe I can get a job in some other company or some other firm, or maybe I can move back to Japan. And then I didn't know what to do. So I met with the coach and kind of went, we went through that, what I really like to do. And then I think that maybe this is corny to think that, but I like to help people because I always kind of, because a lot of people extended hand to me once I got to this, well, before that, but uh, especially once I got to this country, not knowing anybody without other people's help, I couldn't really get here. And, and so I just like to pay back, but also I really feel good by myself helping others. And when I, when I'm able to, that's what I love to do. So then that's what it kind of come up to, how can I help other people? And then came up with this idea of, oh, if we can be all within a community that the people can actually access easily, then I might be able to create the model of the community that you can actually help each other. So that's kind of came about. Kanako, how do you take care of yourself? Yeah, I'm going to take care of, I take care of some exercise and running, all that. I, I have to move. I just, I'm a very active person. Okay. So I can't really, that's why I'm just kind of, I'm kind of interested in why I was able to, I like to mind myself that I was sitting and then looking at the computer and then working for all 20 these years, 20 years of looking at the people's financial statements. I'm just amazed that I was able to do that, but I, I just had to move my body. Yeah. So that's what I, and I eat well, I don't lately, I really don't drink much. And, and then I'm very careful with what I eat and I eat a lot of green vegetables and, you know, um, I don't eat any fast food and all that. That's probably smart. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I do eat you know Japanese food quite a bit. But then that Japanese food has a lot of sodium, so that's another thing I had to be careful with. Though. Yeah. So you so your coach is like one of your mentors, right? Yes. So do you have any other mentors? 
Uh, not at this moment. Okay. Yeah. I, I always looking for other mentors and um the course is the main one right now. Yeah, main one, but she's more, yeah. It's it's mentally she's really, you know. Um, well, but business wise mm -hmm. too, but I, she helps me out to clean out my, I guess, what I'm thinking yeah. so that I can actually think clearly every week. Right. So to follow up on the thing, like you said, giving back, you have your mentor, but who, who are you mentoring? Do you have anyone that you're mentoring? Uh, so right now, actually, I also work as a lead advisor for, uh, um, the small business resiliency program is called at the Japan Remaker Society of Washington State. Okay. And uh, I, they hire me as a contract person to provide assistance to the small businesses, not just a, like a technology startup, but as somebody who really like, a, let's say I want to start the uh, mobile cafe. How do I going to start from a scratch? How do I um, get a business license and in this this is a community where many Japanese immigrants who recently came here that their English skills are not as good as mine and then that's the where I'm able to explain or show how in Japanese so that they get more comfortably do things and or they can get a clear understanding of what they're happening so th this is a program that I actually um uh, Department of Commerce of the Washington State uh, created, and they're the one who sends the funding to okay. the. We have like a thirty-nine different networks in the groups that are working, and then each community we provide to help small businesses. How do you do your schedule? Like every day, do you like work ten hours a day? Do you work, <laughs> do you like work until something's done? Do you like take Thursday, Friday off? Like, or is this just like all I, over the place? Day off for the entrepreneur? Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, I start, so, you know, my, my son is high school, so we get up early because, you know, it's like they go to school really early. My goodness, I don't know. So, so my, my, I guess, business uh, hours start at 7 a.m. And then usually ends at a four because I had to you know, pick up my son from a school. And and then it's necessary. I do work after the dinner, and so it, it's like a so. But then I have a th I I wear three different hats. So that this task AI as a CEO as a task AI, but also I do have my own CPA practice. So I uh, you know I have my own clients work, and then on top of that, I do have this uh, lead advisor for the small business resiliency program. And you're still a wife. You're still a mother. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, like you say, you have friends, friend. you know. Yeah. Social obligations. So everything is in my schedule, but yeah, I'm sure something is fall off always. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't remember what? what we have this what? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, what's something you've learned about being an entrepreneur that you like didn't think you would learn? Like, I mean, let me phrase that. Like, let me phrase that question. So, like, there's like you had to learn marketing, sales, all this kind of stuff, right? What's something that you learned? Like, I, I can't believe I learned this, right? Like. I would never imagine I could learn this stuff, but I'm now I'm doing it. You know, well, some of the marketing stuff, because, you, you know, it's like a really uh, what what should be you focusing on and how you like it, thinking about the ideal client persona. I never thought about that. I had to really laser focused on that to be able to kind of focus on your business yeah. so something like that but also maybe just the day-to-day -day thing i think how to juggle everything you're gonna have to really think about um if you want to do something that your your goal you have to really put in your calendar like for me, yeah. like I said, it, motivation is like you said, it's hard, right? Like when you're an um, entrepreneur. Um, so I allocate like 7.30 to 8.30, no matter what. I have a one hour of task AI time. Okay. You're going to have to do something. Otherwise, it's just everything is it's like all other um, projects that are coming in and you have to take care of it, but you do have to. So so I think it, I, I, I think I got even... Now, as looks as chaos as a appeared to be, I think I have a better sense of a, how do I organize in my schedule. Okay, I'm kind of amazed by that, but I, I'm not really that organized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure you are. 
So talk about this, you know, like people will say like, you know, work on product, 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 work on business. Other people, like you said, you got to do market, you network and stuff, right? But I think some people like only do product, only product stuff and no one knows who they are or vice versa. That every little networking event and the parties I built, right? right? Like, how do you yourself like make sure you have a balance between networking, telling people what you're doing, meeting new people, and getting building the product? Because that has to be synced and balanced, right, right? Right, it's true that you're right. I think it depends on the industry and what kind of product you have. But for me, though, I I, I think I'm focused because for me, at my stage on my com company, for me is the goal is to have a pilot program used by you know, at least a large 10, like for example, the childcare providers. Mm -hmm. So I'm focused on that. And unless like, I don't go out just randomly out to the, I don't know, some kind of a, a networking event, yeah. unless there's something connected yeah. to that. Like, like you go and track a, what was it like a, a gaming convention? Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Might yeah. be probably a waste of your time. Right, exactly. Or even, the, um, you know, like a, a, how do I say, investor, um, some kind of great meet and stuff. Mm -hmm. Unless I really know there are people who might be interested in that I'm meeting, I just don't, because my goal, really goal, is to meet childcare providers, yeah. not. You know, the, the stages will, I'm sure, change. I hope it oh, yeah, will change. Yeah. So I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm very conscious about the, that this really makes sense yeah. in my life right now to spend time for this. Is there such a thing as a child care association? Like, yeah, there, there are. There are. Okay. I know like, yeah. but somehow I, got, I get this a newsletter from the, some kind of funeral, new, funeral, funeral association, right? I don't know how, I don't know how it got on it, right? <laughs> And I so it has like all the funeral homes in the United States, all the directors, you know, to yeah. make sure, right? So I'm going to the child care, the same thing. Yeah, there are some. And, okay. and, and it's sometimes it's kind of, I think it's kind of hard to, my struggle is though that also, um, how do you get on that association? Meaning most of the association, they don't like to have people coming in and business purposes, yeah. right? So I think it's a days of dedicate kind of balance oh, do they have like child care association conventions you know yeah they do they do okay. I, ha I haven't actually there was a one big one in coming up in may and i actually participated a few years ago mm -hmm. and they had a they were looking for speakers mm -hmm. and i thought well this this would be a ding, good ding, place ding. yeah ding, ding, so ding. i applied for yeah. it and then just the, this is a virtual still well, this year it's virtual yeah. you had like a two days three days i can't remember and i applied for it and then well i didn't really get that particular spot mm -hmm. but they gave me a really good feedback yeah so I'm not, you know, they say, oh, we love to have you. We, we really liked your subject, but we have so many that we just couldn't fit there. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'm just kind of trying to study mm -hmm. and then where people are, what the child care providers congregate. Yeah. And it's just kind of one by one kind of, kind of moving toward to that. Hey, so, can you give us your social media so people can reach out to you? What? So, can you give us your social media so, so people can reach out oh, to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, I'll tell you though, I don't do a lot of social media okay. <laughs> because again, I'm childcare providers are not on the social media much. Yeah. So that's why, and I started doing that. I did the Instagram and then I did, uh, the Facebook mm -hmm. and I thought I was going to do Twitter, but then it's like a, now when I'm think of it, Oh, this is the reason that I'm telling you this based on how, uh, child care providers view my uh, campaign letters, they're all 97% is a desktop. Okay. So that will tell you that people are looking at the work, mm -hmm. not phones. Yeah. So I I do have an Instagram, but then it's, it, it is actually, the, uh, it's a task key item. Okay. Yeah. And then also uh, Facebook, I do this, but I really rarely um, update it because of this. So it's a, I guess the social media, the only thing is like probably that you, you can go to my www.taskei.com. Okay. And that'd be, I know it's not sexy. Sorry. <laughs> I used to done that, but I, th that's the thing I learned is what works, what doesn't. And I'm trying to not to spend time that something that is not going to be working for me. Yeah. For your product, can anyone sign up for, or do they have to have uh, someone in, ch in child care? Uh, so for right now, um, if you are a parent, 
and your child is going to the child care, some sort of a child care, uh, you definitely have to bring it just like a video. You have to talk to your child care provider. Okay. They're the one who's going to be a core and they're going to, they, they are the one who um, basically be the, how do I, the core of the community okay. and its connection and the, for the security purposes as well. So I would love to have a parent talking to the child care provider and say, I want this. So the people who do your product now, are they going to be locked in like, like cheaper prices, so to speak, or better pricing? Because uh, basically the, you yeah, have to charge more money, yeah, right? It's a better pricing right now, which okay. is free. So they'll be locked, so they'll be locked Sorry, in. Sorry, but yeah. And then I will definitely make a better arrangement Arrange for with, the people yeah. who actually come in and then, uh, you know, early bird prices yeah. in, in the future. But from, yeah. And for pricing, it'll be like month to month, a year. Yeah, I'm thinking, I mean, all kinds of different ways that I was kind of thinking that, you know, you're going to actually subscribe for it annually. It could be much cheaper. But even that, that's true, that I'm kind of like to get some opinion of the parents mm -hmm. and say, how much can you afford? Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything else that I asked you that I didn't or anything else you want to talk about? Oh, no, this is great. It was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for, yeah, um, let me talk. And... Uh, yeah, it it it's it, it is a it's a so much fun to yes. talk. I, I never yeah. thought that it's like I'll be talking about all different things about yeah. Japan and yes. all yeah. that. Yeah. It, it, you know, you, you don't really get to talk about yourself much anyway, no, no, right? No. So yeah. So uh, can you give us any last advice or wisdom or anything you want to talk about? Wisdom or um, if you have a dream, stick with it, unless you call. Call it, call, you, you call your shop, you know? But what I learned was if you think it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's all in your head. If it works, it will work. We got to make an effort. But that's what I kind of feel like, just like any other inventions or whatever, right? Everybody said, oh, that's so stupid. Why do you do that? Or, you know, most of the, I, I always talk about the Edison, the letter, the story about the child, what is that? Uh, I think it was a grade school teacher wrote to the, his mother and mother said, oh, you're so genius that uh, you don't, there's nothing to learn at the school. And then he wants you to, you know, me to teach you at a school. I mean, and of course there's direct opposite. There was a direct, direct opposite. opposite yeah. So I, I think this, I yeah. really think that if you believe in that, you can. And Yeah, I, I can remember somewhere said like a, if you say you can, doesn't matter if you say you can, you can't, you're right both ways, right? Yeah. If you say I can, you're going to do it. If you say I can't do it, you're not going to do it. Right. And so I think that a lot of things is, is the mental exercise because we can always do whatever we want, decide and tomorrow and just, yeah, I'm going to quit and then you quit. But then that might be the only thing that is stopping you. Yeah. So, and then otherwise, for the for us entrepreneurs, if you don't believe it, you can't do it. I, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's a hard life in some ways. It's it's a very enjoyable and very, I think I learn a lot every day. It's very flexibility will give us and all that creativity. But then it's not easy. Yeah. Like like for me, like I went to Vegas for a few days, right? Mm -hmm. If I worked from some company, there's no way I could do it. It's like last minute trip, no way I could have done it, right? Right. Don't exactly. wrong. Like I was like, having a good time, I still like doing work, you know, or trying to do some work too, right? Right. You work for, you know, some corporation, you're not doing that, right? But exactly. I mean, I wouldn't be here if I working for the yeah. CPA firm still, right? I can't really take that a couple hours away no. from my work. But so, so you, I mean, it's, it's everything you can do. You have a lot of flexibility and then, and, and uh, yeah, it, it just, uh, it, it's a great life for me. I, mm -hmm. I, I wish that I would I started it much earlier, yeah. I think. But I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah. But then, you know, it, it, there is always timing. Yeah. There is always timing, something, yeah. some some life changes happen, then you realize that. And that's most of people make a move. Mm -hmm. So talk about this. I think a lot of people when they start to be a company, they underestimate the amount of mental toughness they need, right? Can yes. you talk about the mental toughness you yes. have to do this? Yes, I I completely agree. It's the mental, it's a lot of, I mean, I almost say 90% is mental that you really have to be being, because it's so, so hard to be consistent and then be to, to be able to accountable yourself. It's so hard because I think humans are kind of nature and kind of lazy in a way, I think. 
Yes, yes. <laughs> and then it, you just have to whip yourself to get up and do things. And that sometimes it's some subject that I, I really don't, I mean, like making a cold calls. I Sometimes I do have to do it, but I, yeah. I don't, I hate it. You just want to like, Ugh. Yeah, but then sometimes you just have to do it. Yeah. And that mental capacity is, I mean, it, not a mental capacity, but more like, a, yeah, how, how, I don't know how to call it. It's a mental ability yeah. to be able to force it. One time this person told me, Jason, how you doing? I mean, you do this all the time. You kick it with it. I'm like, dude, I'll be honest with you. I, I want to quit every day. You do? Uh, yeah, I want to quit every day, right? How come you don't? Because I'm not, I'm not a punk, right? <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> I'm not a punk. I got to yeah. keep on going, right? Yeah. Because like, who doesn't want to like take the easy way out, right? You know, stay at home, you know, like drink some bourbon, play with the kids, watch TV all day long, you know, have no responsibilities. Well, the thing is, the people, we don't talk about it. People don't talk about that, what they do, right? It's hard, but they don't want to show that because when you're talking about, you look at Instagram or Facebook or whatever, people talk about things that are really fabulous. Yeah. And then you feel like everybody, oh my gosh, people's life is such a shiny, yeah. you know, but I think it is, that's what they show, but you never yeah. know what people are going no. through. So you it's don't. just a you don't people don't really talk about the what's the hardest thing i mean oh i had a really hard day you know you don't you don't talk about that <laughs> no you don't no you don't um think what else so who else is doing what you're doing are there like other companies doing this not exactly the same exactly. thing okay. yeah that even the actually interest well, one good thing about this is the patent examiner told me there is nothing out there that exactly what That's i'm good doing news for you but you know that's the thing. It's it's a good for, news for me, but in the same time, I mean, there's always competition. You know, like there's always competition. It will come up. With it might be somebody. Yeah, who, somebody else, it might yeah. be competition. Could be someone who doesn't have a cell phone, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So there are. You know, you can what what I'm doing. You can do it by um, um, you know analog. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could be a competition. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, there's always, but it's just I have to kind of stayed on the coast and then be creative i guess to come up with the different things and to help yeah. others that make it easier for people to use yeah cool. all right so last chance anything else you want to talk about go over. oh anything so anybody who's listening and then um the parents please ask your <laughs> child care providers to uh, uh maybe try to use this because i'd love to have you thanks Monica. thanks for your time today really appreciate it thank you so much and to our listeners, thank you for your time as well. Remember to be great every day.